the baseball night in America. On a beautiful night at Jay Stadium in New York, the New York Mets play host to the San Diego Padres. The Padres out of the National League West, where they have the best race in baseball. The Dodger lead a half game, the Padres only four games back. The race is equally exciting for the wild card race of the National League, where the Padres are just three and a half games back. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Bob Murphy. The handsome guy on my left is Rick Cerrone, who caught very well indeed for 16 years in the big leagues. Rick Cerrone, most of your time was spent in the American League. How do you view the wild card races? Well, Murph, I really like the wild card races for the cities that are involved, but more importantly for the players because it keeps them focused and something to shoot for. Tonight we get an opportunity to see Tony Gwynn going after his sixth batting title, hitting 358. Multi-hit games, 47 this year. That's more than I think I had my entire career. Here we get a look at Tony hitting his first major league grand slam off Tommy Green. This was Tuesday night. And Murph, that's the first grand slam he's ever hit on any level. Little league, high school, college. He usually leads the league at hitting, and this year he's having a great RBI year. He has 73 RBIs. Now leading the Mets since the All-Star break, Jose Vizcaino hitting over 300 since the break, and they're really exciting with a lot of young players coming up. And we have an exciting pitching matchup for our game tonight on a beautiful evening at Shea. Willie Blair, 6-2 and 3-5-2, and pitching for the Padres. 22-year-old rookie Jason Isringhausen, 3-2 and two on the mound for the New York Mets. Now let's go to Anna Storm. everybody, I'm Hannah Storm. Welcome to Baseball Night in America, brought to you by Toyota. One matinee today in the National League. The East leading Braves traveled to Wrigley to take on the Cubs. We pick it up at the top of the eighth, 4-3 Atlanta. Javi Lopez lacing the triple off reliever Terry Adams. That drives in Fred McGriff and Ryan Klesko, and the Braves go up 6-3. They never look back. They won their fifth in a row. 7-3, to three. and after the game, Atlanta, perhaps looking ahead to the playoffs, acquired some outfield depth in Mike Devereaux, getting him from the White Sox for a minor league outfielder. The loss dropping the Cubs three games back in the wild card race. Colorado leading the way, hosting St. Louis tonight. Meanwhile, the Astros are in Florida. In the American League, Texas takes its two-and-a-half game wild card lead to Kansas City. The Mariners, coming off Ken Griffey's ninth inning heroics last night, face Andy Pettit and the New York Yankees. And we'll be following all these stories and the rest of the night in baseball for you. We send you out to the ballparks after this message from your local station. He, out of Brighton, Illinois, and his major league career is off to a good start, Rick. Yeah, especially, Murph, you look at what he did in double-A and triple-A this year, going a combined 11-2. and two. He features an outstanding overhand curveball and a sneaky fastball. And the leadoff batter here on this beautiful evening, Steve Finley. And the first pitch of the game is taken inside and low. It is ball one. Finley having a marvelous year for the Padres. He leads the National League and runs scored with 88. Hit of the year foul down the left field line. That'll wind up in the stands. The defense for the Mets, you see Jose Vizcaino highlighted. Very consistent, makes all the routine plays. Not that flashy, but gets the job done. Breaking ball inside low, two balls and a strike. He has had a marvelous year for the New York Mets, particularly over the last two months. Two months, he's been about just about a 300 hitter. Now Isringhausen falling behind on Steve Finley, three and one. Isringhausen will not walk many. A couple of the starts since he came up from Triple A, he would get behind the hitters and have some trouble. Foul back, three and two. But overall, his control has been pretty good, Rick Sarone. Yeah, I like his fastball. When I, I talked to Kelly Stanett, the catcher for the Mets, and he talks about sitting in the middle of the plate because he's got a lot of life on his ball. It might cut, it might sink, but he likes to throw it in the strike zone. Great natural movement. Ground ball hit down to Rico Bronia playing first. He falls down, but he gets to the bag in time to complete the play. Rico stumbled after handling a pretty easy play. So one out and nobody on, and Biff Roberts will be coming to the plate. Bip Roberts is one of the best talents you'll see. Rico, very short. <laughs> there might be a sniper up in the stand somewhere, Murph. I don't know. I hope <laughs> Just not. Just fell down. 
Rico's a terrific glove man around first base. Before he's through, he'll win a gold glove or two. Now here is Bip Roberts. The Padres just got him back about five days ago. He had been on the DL. And a curveball inside low, one ball and no strikes. And Bip Roberts is a terrific offensive ball player. And he get 326. Isringhausen missing high and away, ball two. His teammates call him Izzy. With Roberts batting second in the lineup, gives the Padres good speed at the top of their order for Gwynn batting third. This is over for a strike call. It is two and one. The incomparable Tony Gwynn with a lifetime batting average of 335. That just misses. And Isringhausen is behind three and one on Bip Roberts. Very important game for the San Diego Padres. On their road trip, the Padres have won three while losing four. Jammed him, it's popped up, shallow left field. It may drop in. Nope. Coming in quickly to make the play, Ryan Thompson. So Isringhausen did a good job of jamming the hitter. I'll tell you, Bob, when you have a 3 1 fastball, a good major league hitter in Bip Roberts, and he jams him on a 3 1 fastball, he's sitting on fastball all the way. That just tells you how good Izzy's fastball is. It can get on the hitter in a hurry to go along with that straight downer curveball. Now, here is Tony Gwynn. And a ground ball toward the middle. Yes, indeed. A base hit to center field. So, the National League's leading hitter, Tony Gwynn. First pitch fastball. Gwynn doesn't try to pull the ball. What he does real well, and what's made him so consistent over the years, he stays inside the pitch all the way, where he doesn't try to roll his top hand over and hit weak ground balls. He tries to stay inside the ball and hit it up the middle or to left field. I think you feel fortunate when you hold Tony Gwynn to a single. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, you're just happy <laughs> to have him go down there and stand at first base. It could be a lot worse. Switch hitter Ken Caminetti, the cleanup batter. And Isringhausen just missing one ball and no strikes. Isringhausen was dynamite pitching for former major leaguer Toby Hara at Norfolk this year in Triple A. He won nine, he lost only one. His ERA was 1.55. He should have quite a future. That just is out of the outside corner. So two balls and no strikes. From that center field camera, you can see the late movement on Israel Housing's pitches. Some will cut in on a left hand hitter, some will sink away. And as a catcher, you just try to stay in the middle of the plate and react to the pitch. 2 0 delivery. Ground ball toward the middle, diving. Jeff Kent has it, throws to first. He won't get it. I thought he might throw to second. It looked like he might have a play there against Tony Kent. And now the Padres have first and second. Kent goes a long way to keep the ball in the infield. I think you're right, Murph. I think the play he had was the second base. No chance to get Caminetti going down the line. Beautiful play by second baseman Jeff Kent of New York. And now the hitter is Scott Livingstone, the first baseman. Livingstone, a former Detroit Tiger, has really been wielding the bat for manager Bruce Bochy. Hitting at 333 and a line drive base into center field. Tony Gwynn is being waved around third. The throw is coming home to the plate, but not in time. And the Padres are on top, one to nothing. Moving to second on the throw home is Scott Livingstone. So Livingstone, a big hit, a solid single to center field. Driving home, Tony Gwynn. Another first pitch. The Padres have a good scatter report. They're going to jump on Israel Hauser early in the count. And a bad job by Buford throwing the ball over the cutoff. Man, no play at the plate. The throw's got to go to third base. Here you see the rainbow coming into the plate, and that enables Livingstone to go down to second base and get in scoring position. Now the hitter will be Arky C. and Praco. For the fifth time this year, Arky C. and Praco is playing shortstop for his manager. Wild pitch and a run will score. Digging for the plate, Caminetti. And to score, Padres lead 2-0. Well, those are the things that happen when you have young, inexperienced ball players breaking into the big leagues. Well, is Isringhausen now says, well, they're jumping on my first pitch fastball. Let me go to the curveball. 
Goes to the curveball. Stinnett does the best job possible trying to get outside, and that is in the middle of the other batter's box. A tough ball to block. So the Padres have jumped on rookie right-hander Jason Isringhausen. They have two runs in. And it, he holds on the swing a little bit high. Isringhausen retired the first two batters. But as he has done so many times, Tony Gwynn started the rally with a single to center field. Good fastball that time by Isringhausen. Two balls and a strike on Cian Franco. Arkey hitting at 256 on the year. We played together in 92 with Montreal. His first major league hit was in this ballpark. A pinch hit, three run single. He told me against Tim Burke. Imagine a three run single. He's a pretty good hitter, isn't he? <laughs> Who was on first base? Spike Owen was the base runner at first. There was a 3 2 count. He was moving. Little line drive in the left center field. Hojo at the time was playing center field. Spike, the, the throw went in the second base. Spike never hesitated around third. But how about that for your first major league hit? 3 1 delivery. Foul ball coming straight back at no play. 3 and 2. The Padres traded a pitcher, Scott, to get. Marky C. and Franco for the San Diego Padres. And talking to Greg Nettles, their third base coach, he said, This has been, Marky's been our savior. He's filled in great at all different positions. He played shortstop, second base. He'll go in late in the game at first base, a defensive replacement. Hit hard. Backhand stab by Butch Husky. And the throw to Abrodia, the side retired. But the Padres scored two runs. There were three hits. And one man left on. Middle of the first, Padres two, and the Mets nothing. Jose Vizcaino is short. Carl Everett in right. Cleanup batter Jeff Kent. Rico Brony at first, number five. Ryan Thompson, the left fielder, number six. A rookie, Butch Husky, at third, batting seventh. Kelly Sedet, the catcher, number eight. And on the mound, Jason Isringhausen, batting ninth. Willie Blair, a 29-year-old right-hander, is now with his fifth major league ball club. And he's being having a very successful stay with the San Diego Padres. How about the Padres? They trade Andy Bennis to Seattle. They give him a couple of spot starts, and he's he stayed in the rotation. He's not giving it up. He's three and one with a 1.00 ERA. And the first delivery to Damon Buford, the leadoff batter, is taken. Ball one. Buford having trouble getting it going in the big leagues. He was playing in Rochester when he came to New York in the trade that sent Bobby Bonilla to the Baltimore Orioles. Bouncing ball hit to short. Cian Franco throwing off balance. Oh, good throw. He throws out Buford one man away. In the defense for the San Diego Padres, Bip Roberts, and they're glad he's back in the line. Offensive threat playing left field. Steve Finley been very consistent. Their MVP player at center, Tony Gwynn, of course, in right. Kemenet. Chian Franco, Jody Reed at second, Scott Livingstone, and behind the plate, Brian Johnson. Jose Vizcaino, the number two hitter for Dallas Greens, New York Mets. And he bluffs it a bunt. The pitch is over, strike one goal. Vizcaino hitting at 275 on the year. Hitting at the top of the batting order or the bottom, he has 45 RBIs. Jammed him, take it inside high, one ball and one strike. Bill Hahn is the plate umpire here tonight. This is Bob Davidson's umpiring team. What a beautiful evening in New York, about 70 degrees. And it's inside and low, two balls and one strike. The Padres and the Mets play again tomorrow night here at Shea Stadium. They conclude the series on Sunday afternoon, and the Padres return home to San Diego. Lined foul down the left field line, no play. The Padres will be going home to Jack Murphy Stadium for a nine game homestand they'll play the same teams at home they have been playing on this eastern swing they will open with Montreal then play Philadelphia and the New York Mets as they try to get even closer in the National League West inside load of Vizcaino you know Murph the uh, Mets have become something of a spoiler lately they swept the Dodgers last weekend they won a tremendous game coming from behind the three runs in the bottom of the ninth last night for the Padres. And it's chopped foul, no play. Dallas Green's team has played awfully well since the All-Star break. Since the All-Star break, the Mets have won 22 and lost 18. And they are the youngest team in the major leagues right now. Their starting rotation has four rookies, and the only veteran is Bobby Jones really finishing out his second year. 
Strike three called. He caught the inside corner to Jose Vizcaino. So Willie Blair has his first strikeout. Baseball Night of America is brought to you by Chevrolet, the cars that just 36 million people depend on. Every day, genuine Chevrolet. By Bud Light. If you want that great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. And MCI, the company that brings you Proof Positive. Switch hitter Carl Everett, the number three batter in the Mets order. Everett has really done well since being called up from AAA Norfolk. He started the year with the Mets and did not hit. Taken high. He started out in baseball with one of Rick Cerrone's old ball clubs, the New York Yankees, and was taken in the expansion draft. Taken high, ball two. He was taken by the Marlins. The Marlins and Mets made a trade. Kilby Overus went to the Marlins, and Carl Everett came to the Mets. He looks like he has the chance to be a very good big league ball player. You see right here his stance. More and more hitters, major league hitters, are going to the open stance. And what I think that does, it frees up their eyes to see with both of them the pitch coming in. Powell ball back in the crowd now three and two. What you have to do from that open stance, you have to get close. You'll see how Everett starts with the open stance, but his first stride is towards the pitcher. If he would stay in that position and stride away, you wouldn't be able to handle the outside corner. And what he does, he tries to close up and drive the ball back through the middle. That is low ball four. Everett is on with a walk. I guess it doesn't really ma matter how you stand. It's what happens where you stride and the way you stride in the plate. Exactly. It doesn't matter where you start. You're going to finish in the same spot, and that's in the good hitting area in a launching position, as they like to talk about. Now here is cleanup batter Jeff Kemp. His year began. He was in an ice cold hitting slump. Then he broke out of his slump and hit sensationally for over two months. Got up to almost 290. Then along came another batting slump. Baseball has always been a game of streaks, both hot and cold. If you're red hot, sooner or later you have to pay for it with a cold streak. And right now he's trying to fight his way out of a batting slump. In the dirt, good job by Brian Johnson, the Padre catcher. Moved out nicely, got down in position, didn't really try to catch the ball. You have a lot of equipment on as a catcher, so use the gear. Don't try to catch it, just get in position to block it. Does a nice job. You see how he keeps his glove down on the ground between his legs? That's the little hole that the ball likes to sneak through. So get the glove down to block it. A catcher can take a pretty good pounding over a long season. And a ground ball foul. Gary Carter used to say, Rick, He'd go home after the season was over be a month before those bruises would disappear from his body. Uh, I definitely do not regret getting those foul tips. And you see here, Brian Johnson has that little extra pad. That's where I used to get hit all the time. Right on that little shoulder blade. Nothing you can do. And you know they talk about Murph. How do you catch a foul tip? You really never catch it. You put your glove where you hope it's going, and maybe the ball goes in there. No way in the world you have time to line it up. No. That's off the outside corner. Two balls and a strike. I noticed that Ryan Johnson, the Padre catcher, doesn't use what you guys call the Billy Goose strap to protect his Adam's apple. I wonder why. Well, now they've actually extended the bar. I can't tell if he's using the extended bar. That kind of helps you. The best way to protect it against getting balls in the Adam's apple is keep your chin close to the <laughs> chest protector. Don't look up in the air. Yeah, you're right. It looks like you may have the Little extended, extended bar. bar. Pitched by Willie Blair, and the count goes two and two on Jeff Kent. There you see, Murph, just that little extra extension that protects that area you're talking about. I think Steve Yeager was the first one to come up with the the flap. And you remember how that started? He was in the on deck circle, I believe, and a broken bat. And he's lucky to be alive. Yeah, he did a wonderful thing by designing that what they call the Billy Goat strap, the flap, leather flap hanging down in front of his Adam's apple. But now this extended mask does it probably even better than. Yeah, I think so. And, and you know, once in a while, that extended, the Billy Goat flap that you talk about would get in the way when you try to throw to second base. Willie Blair keeping an eye on the runner at first, Carl Everett. Padres have a 2-0 lead. We're in the last of the first inning at Shea Stadium in New York. 
What a beautiful baseball evening. It reminds you of a fall evening, Rick Saron. It is so totally comfortable. This is a beautiful night, especially in the middle of August. You're expecting it. This is San Diego weather. It really is. Inside to Jeff Kemp. Hey, Murph, you brought up about slumps. There's no real way to get out of them. And what I used to try to do, I used to try to hit every ball right back at the pitcher because it gave you longer time to see the baseball. And I think your chances of getting base hits up the middle are greater than if you're pulling off balls and just trying to hit them to left field. Now the runner will be going on three and two with two men down. There goes Everett. Foul ball back on the screen. No play. So we have to do it again. Carl Everett will come back to first base. Padre has got three hits in a row off Jason Isringhausen in the top of the first inning to go out in front two nothing. Tony Gwynn single to center. Caminetti singled. Gwynn went around to third. Then came a base hit by Scott Livingstone and the second run scored on a wild pitch by Jason Isringhausen. So the Padres lead two nothing. There goes the runner. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. So Willie Blair fan two. No runs. One hit. And a man left on after one inning. Two nothing San Diego. This fall from the creators of Magnum P.I. and Quantum Leap. I'm in charge of a possible murder investigation. Which no member of this crew threw a woman overboard. A hero for the 90s. I need time to find out what happened. The truth. Are you testing her guts or yours? Will come out. She was murdered. Jag, Saturdays this fall on NBC. Second inning at Shea Stadium in New York. Jody Reed, the veteran second baseman, and a real good player leading off. And Izzy's fastball is over for a call strike. His teammates call him Izzy, I Z Z Y. The Mets brought up Jason Isringhausen and a left-hander, 21-year-old Bill Pulsifer. They're kind of like Eklund and Jekyll. They're inseparable. There's that curveball, but it's outside. Two balls and a strike. Those two never go any place that they're not together. That's a nice combination, too. A lefty and a righty. There's Pulsifer. There's Pulsifer right there with the... Fu Manchu. That's yeah, nice. You have two young pitchers coming up, one from the right side, one from the left. You used to wear one of those Fu Manchus, <laughs> didn't you? I know you had the mustache. <laughs> had the mustache. 3 1 now to Jody Reed. And it's high inside. He walked him, so he walks the leadoff batter. And that's one of the cardinal sins of baseball. So Isringhausen not off to a good start here tonight against San Diego. This could turn out to be a pretty handsome night for the San Diego Padres. The teams that the Padres are concerned about in the National League West are not off to a good start as we note here as the scores are run. The Dodgers are trailing the Phillies 2 nothing, And the Colorado Rockies are trailing St. Louis. Those are the two clubs the Padres want to pass on their way to the top of the National League West. This is Brian Johnson, the former football star at Stanford, doing a good job for the Padres, hitting a 256. And Isringhausen throws over. To me, batting eighth in the National League has got to be the toughest position to hit in. You have the pitcher in the on deck circle. Pitchers don't really want to challenge the number eight hitter. A lot of off speed pitches. There goes the runner. The throw by Stanett. Safe, he stole a base. So Jody Reed has stolen second. They have been running effectively against Kelly Stanett. Practically every major league ball club, Rick Cerrone, relies on advanced scouting to tell them about things like that. Yeah, you know, the, the Kelly Stanett's been struggling behind the plate. It takes a little bit longer right here, and they guessed right on the slow curveball. And he's only thrown out 10 out of 67 base runners now, only 15% on the year. Now Brian Johnson hitting a foul ball down the third baseline. Mets and Padres play tomorrow night. They play Sunday afternoon, the last game of the four-game series. I've been broadcasting a couple of those Indian ball games. That must be fun. <laughs> One through nine, they can all go deep. They can really Seven, hit. Seven 300 hitters in their lineup. Bouncer hit over the mound. Tough play. This guy ain't no barehanded pickup. Oh, he got him. He got him, and that was a great looking play. Jose Biscaino, a barehanded pickup, makes the throw across the diamond to Bronya just in the nick of time as the runner moves over to third. Here's the MCI proof positive replay. 
That's a great job. The only play he has is bare handing it. And a good job by Jody Reed to read the slow ball off the bat. He advanced to third base, forcing an infield that they have to play in now. They don't want to give up another easy run. That was not a suicide squeeze. It might have been a mixed sign there, I think, because he butted the ball, and he's not certain there's nobody for him to bunt over to second base. Well, pitchers are so used to bunting in the National League. He's got to look around. Willie, you got to look around. Jody's on third base, not second. You're not putting him over. A little safety suit squeeze. The Mets have the infield in. Jody Reed on third and one down. The hitter, the pitcher, Willie Blair. Fouled in. He goes over into the dugout. No play. Now a two strike cut here. You will see the infield playing in. Well, you know, Dallas Green knows that they have the pitcher hitting. They don't want to give up a little easy ground ball to short and run scored, so he plays the infield in. Curveball. He needs a strikeout. He was trying to get it there with a curveball. One ball and two strikes on Willie Blair. He's having a little trouble controlling the big breaking curveball early in the ball. Curveball is over. Straight three call. So Willie Blair is called out on strikes. The first strikeout for Jason Isringhausen. And we'll go to the top of the batting order. This is what you call a jelly leg if you're a hitter. See those legs? They turn to jelly as that big slow curveball comes in there. <laughs> That's the biggest difference with the National League. If you're a pitcher in the National League, you have an easy out in the lineup every day. That number nine hitter. American League, you have the designated hitter. I don't exactly like it myself. It makes it a lot tougher to pitch in the American League. Steve Finley is the batter. And a strike call in the inside corner. Finley having a terrific year. Batting at 314, he leads the National League and runs scored up among the leaders in total base hits. And he can play a lot of center field. Jody Reed on third and two men down. Just off the inside corner, one ball and one strike. The biggest thing with Finley is they've never realized how good a player he is until they see him day in and day out. They've said, talked about him being their most valuable player to date. And that's a tough statement with Tony Gwynn doing what he's doing in the third spot. Ground ball hammered right at Jeff Kemp. He looks it into his glove, throws to first, and then retires to side. No runs, no hits, and one man left. Middle of the second, the Padres lead 2 nothing. Chevrolet in baseball, a most valuable relationship. Since 1987, Chevrolet has been proud to donate Astro Vans to different charities in the names of the All-Star, League Championship, and World Series MVP award winners. This year, Chevrolet will donate MVP Astro Vans to local chapters of the Special Olympics. And Chevrolet will also donate $50,000 to the Boys and Girls Clubs of America in the names of all regular season players of the game. Genuine Chevrolet in baseball, together towards the future. I've stopped playing baseball now, but my son Reed just signed a pro contract. Sometimes we go over his game, and if he asks, I tell him what I know. Like when your muscles get sore, take Advil. Just a couple are strong, fast, and work for me. And Advil's gentle on my stomach. If it'll work on these old muscles, then I know it'll work on mine. Nothing's been proven to last longer than Advil. Advanced medicine for pain. Chevrolet in baseball, a most valuable relationship. Since 1987, Chevrolet has been proud to donate Astro Vans to different charities in the names of the All-Star, League Championship, and World Series MVP award winners. This year, Chevrolet will donate MVP Astro Vans to local chapters of the Special Olympics. And Chevrolet will also donate $50,000 to the Boys and Girls Clubs of America in the names of all regular season players of the game. Genuine Chevrolet in baseball, together towards the future. I've stopped playing baseball now, but my son Reed just signed a pro contract. Sometimes we go over his game, and if he asks, I tell him what I know. Like when your muscles get sore, take Advil. Just a couple are strong, fast, and work for me. And Advil's gentle on my stomach. If it'll work on these old muscles, then I know it'll work on mine. Nothing's been proven to last longer than Advil. Advanced medicine for pain. That's first baseman Rico Bronio will be leading off against Willie Blair. Padres two runs, three hits. New York no runs, no hits. The home second inning at Shea Stadium. 
Hudson Padres have played seven times this year with the Padres winning four and the Mets winning three. And the breaking ball by Willie Blair is over for a strike call. Willie Blair is not a powerful type pitcher at all, but he seems to have good command of those breaking pitches. In the air to deep right field by Georgia. Going, going, and gone. A home run. A home run for Rico Brunia. Beautiful shot, a high fly ball, and deep to right field. The Brunia is 14th of the year. Rico Brunia with his 15th home run of the year. It is now a 2-1 to one ball game. Spot where you do not like to throw left hand hitters. Low fastballs down and in. The sweet spot. They just dropped the barrel at the bat on the ball, and that ball was, was not walking out of this ballpark. Way back. They love to put that golf swing on it, don't they? Now the pitch on the way to Ryan Thompson, and it's ball one. Left hand hitters will use that golf swing, as they call it, going down, putting the bat under that ball, lifting it high in the air, and they can really give it a ride. Thompson lays off at a strike call. One ball and one strike. Ryan has had trouble getting back into a good groove. He was hurt. He went on the DL. Then he went out on rehab. Ground ball hit to third. Jim Caminetti has a good arm. So one out and nobody on. We go now to Hannah Storm. Thanks a lot, Bob. Well, it seems that balls are flying everywhere across the country tonight. And that's what you would expect at Coors Field, Cardinals and Rockies. Brian Ricard's first pitch of the game, and Cardinals outfielder Bernard Gilkey with a leadoff home run. One to nothing, St. Louis. They had another one in the top of the inning. Rockies come back with a solo shot from Trinidad Hubbard. It's now 2-1 to one Cardinals. Dodgers and Phillies at the vet. Hideo Nomo showing that he is human lately. With a man on, this is the third batter he faced. Greg Jeffries with a home run to deep right. That scored Jim Eisenreich. That made it 2-0 Phillies. Nomo's lost two of his last three starts. Now back to Bob and Rick at Shea Stadium. Yeah, thank you, Hannah, very much. That'll be good news to Padre fans. The Dodgers, at the moment at least, are trailing the Phillies. Smash off the pitcher's mound in the center field for a base hit. So Butch Husky batting for the first time. Really rips that one right in through the middle. This is where it becomes very dangerous being a pitcher. You're very close to the hitter. That ball does not miss hitting him on the fly by very much. You're very lonely out there as a pitcher. I, Murph, I pitched two innings for the Yankees in blowout games, and that's the thing. You know, you can throw some batting practice and fool around, but during a ball game, you just say, geez, I'm all out here by myself. And I just hope somebody doesn't hit one back here hard. I thought Willie Blair showed amazing reflexes, skipping over that and letting it go on into center field. Flying drive in the air to short left field, base hit. It'll be taken on a high. single for Kelly Stinnett, the catcher. And the Mets have their third hit of the inning. They have first and second with one. Biff Roberts just getting back after being on a long extended stay in the DL. Plays the safe way. Keeps it in front of him. He knows the pitcher's coming up now. That's the way you play it on AstroTurf, Rick. You always have to kind of pull up. You can't let the ball bounce over your head. The game is played on natural grass here at Shea Stadium. And now here is the pitcher, Isringhausen. With one man away, the Padres will set up to play for the sacrifice. That's trailing two to one. We're in the last of the second. A lot of early action. He swings away, and a base hit going into center field. Rounding third, and being held up there is the lead runner, Butch Husky. Now the bases are loaded, and one man out. A single to center field for Jason Isringhausen. I thought sure he, I thought sure he would be butting Rick and he was not. Well that's I tell you, he swings the bat nice, puts the bat on the ball, guys moving all over because of expecting the bunt. But if you remember Sunday against the Dodgers, Israel House hit that double down the line. He's capable of swinging the bat, and I'll tell you what, that's an added dimension. Especially in the National League. If you're a pitcher that can swing it a little bit, help your cause immensely. Base is loaded and one man away. The leadoff batter, Eamon Buford. Hitting less than 200, standing in. Butch Husky, the lead runner at third. Stan is on second. And Isringhausen on first. The ground ball hit to third. The play will be to the plate. One. Now the 
throw to first. Yes, a double play, and the side retired. Buford hitting a ground ball to third. Double play, and the inning is over. At the end of two, the Padres two, and the Mets one. Little investment advice. Bip Roberts, 1986 rookie card, worth about 275 bucks. 20 years from now, who knows? 1,000, 2,000, might even Yo, go. Yo, man, you were looking at Robin Roberts. It says here your car's worth four cents. Yo, T, four cents if it's in excellent condition, but 10 cents if it's totally meant. Oh, I'm sorry. Padres lead 2-1 now as we go to the third. Damon Buford hitting into a 5-2-3 double play. Yeah, it shows his little inexperience jumping on the first pitch of breaking ball. The only place you don't want to hit it is to third. Nice job by Johnson getting out there, waiting for the throw. You almost become an infielder behind the plate. Take Buford the throw and make a good throw back to first base. Tough yep. double play to complete. Buford is a very fast runner, but he was out by a very wide margin. So now we go to the third. The Padres have a two to one lead. And stepping in to lead off of the Padres will be Bip Roberts. Bruce Bochy, I think, prefers that Roberts play left field as to second. Because when he's playing left field, he can play Jody Reed at second. That strengthens him at two positions. Yeah, Jody Reed's had an outstanding year, only committing one error the entire season. So you get, really, they want to get Bip's back in the line. Good offensive player. Yes, he is. You can count on him to hit 300 for you every year. He's another guy that doesn't try to pull the ball very much. Hits it where it's pitched. Ball away. He'll slap it to left field. 22-year-old Jason Isringhausen on the mound for the New York Mets. He'll be a big part of the future of the New York Mets as they go now to... They are now the youngest ball club in the major leagues. And it's outside. One, two balls and a strike. If you had to guess, you would say that next year, the Mets' five-man starting rotation would be Pete Harnish, Bobby Jones, and the three young pitchers. Line drop. Oh, oh good job by Butch Husky. Leaping high in the air. The flag down on line drive. Talk about how Pip likes to go the other way. This is just instincts. Let's see how he does a nice job. Getting high in the air. And remember, next week, next Friday night is prime time. At 8 Eastern and Pacific, join NBC Sports as the Bennett races heat up on baseball night in America. Now it is taken by Tony Gwynn. You'll see the Bronx Bombers, who are fighting for the American League wild card, at Yankee Stadium against the Oakland A's. Bounced to third by Tony Gwynn, taken by Butch Husky, and across to Brunia, two men down. Two outs and nobody on top of the third. So remember, next week, the New York Yankees meeting Oakland Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern and Pacific on Baseball Night in America here on NBC. Switch hitter Ken Caminetti striding to the plate. Caminetti hitting at 284. He has good power from both sides of the plate. I talked to Ken before the ball game, talking about his errors early in the season. 23 errors this year. Line to the gap in left center. Can he get quickly? Reaching down, Ryan Thompson makes the grab, and the inning is over. Good job. No runs, no hits, nobody left on. Middle of the third at Shea Stadium. The Padres two, and the Mets one. This weekend, there's more great NFL preseason action on NBC. Saturday at 1.30 Eastern, the Kansas City Chiefs face the Minnesota Vikings. Then Sunday at 4 Eastern, catch a preview of the upcoming season in NFL Kickoff 95 as we look at the rising stars of the AFC. All this weekend on NBC. Third inning at Shea Stadium with the Padres leading 2-1. to one. Jose Vizcaino batting for the second time. He took a call third strike from right-hander Willie Blair, his first time up. Lying the other way, but foul down the left field line. So a two-strike count out of Jose Vizcaino. Vizcaino hitting 297 over his last 70 games. His bat has been a big, has played a large role for New York. Popped up high into the air, shallow left field. 
trailing out seeing Kraku, the shortstop, and he has it for the out. So one away on the home third at Shea. That will bring to the plate switch hitter Carl Everett. Everett reached a walk in the opening inning. I like the job Willie Blair's doing. You know, early in the count, you stay away from going down and into a lefty, left-hand hitter. There with two strikes, busted the ball in on the hands of Vizcaino. You can get a jam. I think you get more jams. That's the, the art of pitching that's being missed most. Pitching inside, Murph. You don't see it as much as anymore. I called a lot of home runs, and it always seemed like it were their hanging sliders or fastballs out over the plate. Now Carl Everett takes low inside, ball one. There's an old saying, and I guess it's so true. You can't be a winning pitcher in the National League if you don't know how to pitch inside. And a call strike, one ball and one strike. I think so many pitchers are taught to work away, work away. And now the hitting philosophies by all the hitting instructors are to protect the outside part of the plate first rather than the inside. Bins in for a strike call, one ball, two strikes. There's Davey Lopes, the first base coach of the Padres. What a marvelous ball player. Any club that Davey Lopes is working with has to be a lot better on stealing bases. Well, that and also the experience of being through a pennant race. Yeah. They have medals, they have Lopes, Bruce Bochy, you know, you have to give him a lot of credit. He surrounded him with good people, and he's given them the responsibility to handle certain situations. That just misses. Two balls and two strikes. The manager, Bruce Bochy, who was a major league catcher, once caught briefly for the New York Mets. There's Bruce. Hit hard foul down the right field line, no play. The Padres two runs on three hits. New York one run on four hits. Biggest play of this game for Willie Blair with the bases loaded and one out. He got Mets leadoff batter Damon Buford to hit into a 5-2-3 double play. In the dirt handled by Brock. Brian Johnson, the catcher. Real good look at that open stance from the center field camera. You have to get it closed up, or else the outside part of the plate will look like it's nine miles away from you. So watch him stride in. Ground ball hit down to third. Backhand play. Caminetti's throw got him. Good strong throw by Ken Caminetti. That retires Carl Everett. Two outs, so nobody on in the third inning. Well, Murphy, I was always taught not to start a story with two outs, but I did last inning. Here you see Kim and Eddie. You know, he made 23 errors he's had so far this year. And I talked to him. I said, what's going on? Is it just from going from AstroTurf to playing on a dirt field in San Diego? He said, Rick, that had a little something to do with it. But more, he said, we had the short spring training. My arm never really got strong. And he said, it hasn't been strong until like the All-Star break. Boy, that's know, a good observation. You know that. And you know how strong he throws the ball. Oh, Every yeah. ball is thrown as hard as he can. And he said, yeah, he said, I worked out a real lot with the weights, bulked up a little bit, and the arm is where I had most of my throwing errors. Two balls and no strikes to Jeff Kent. Kevin Eddy has about as strong a throwing arm as any third baseman in the game today. And he gets to a lot of balls that other third basemen don't get to. Lying to left center field, a base hit. So Ken has singled the left center with two men away in the home third inning. Let's now have five hits off Willie Blair. Willie Blair has won six and lost only two, making his fifth start. He stepped into the starting rotation when Andy Pettis was traded to the Seattle Mariners, and he really is cashing in his opportunity. And you've talked about how he's always around the plate. Well, sometimes that hurts a pitcher. When you're so close to the plate, just missing by a little bit, hitters go up there, free swingers. They're going to put a lot of those balls in play and give themselves opportunities to get base hits. Rico Bronya, the hitter, strike one. Bronya hit one deep to right for a home run, his 15th home run of the year in the second inning. He was leading off in the second when he hit the long home run. Nice home run production from first base. You like to see big numbers from the third and first baseman. And that's on the corner for a call strike. Bill Hahn, the plate umpire. That was a nice little backdoor slider. Start the slider off the plate away. Catcher frames it very nicely. You'll get a lot of 
pitches. And you know, a catcher can get you more strikes called by just catching it where it's pitched and not trying to pull it closer to the strike zone. Just catch it where it is. Rick, there's an expression that you didn't hear in baseball until just the last few years. You just said a backdoor slider. What do you mean by a well, backdoor slider? A slider is going to break. It's going to break into the left hander. So you start the pitch off the plate, almost in the batter's, the, the right hand hitter's batter's box, and you just try to backdoor it, catch the outside part of the plate. Missing outside to Rico Brunia, two balls, two strikes. I think each decade in Major League Baseball kind of has its own special vernacular. Yeah, hanging sliders. What is a hanging slider? I know what that is. You don't get to catch him in trouble. <laughs> you don't catch him. They, <laughs> somebody in the stands winds up catching him. Long way away. And a bouncer hit to second base. Jody Reed will throw on to first for the out. No runs. One hit. One man left. At the end of three, the pot race two and the best one. Fernando Valenzuela watching. He'll probably start Sunday. Scott Livingstone leading off as we go to the fourth inning. There's Fernando back in 81. My telecasting partner Rick Cerrone <laughs> played against Fernando Valenzuela in the World Series. And a breaking ball inside low one ball one strike. Yeah, 1981 World Series game three took Fernando deep. I said Steve Yeager I'll handle that little screwball. Let me take care of that one. Uh -huh. But he stayed in the ball game battled his way and beat us five to four. Fair ball. Nice backhand play by Bronya. The pitcher covers out at first base. Bronya to Isringhausen. Baseball Night in America is brought to you by Buick and your local Buick dealers. Remember Buick the new symbol for quality in America. Russell Athletic. A really tough athletic wear that can survive anything. Russell Athletic, get tough. And the makers of Advil. RKC and Fraco fouls the ball back on the screen. Padres leading two to one. We're at the top of the fourth at Shea Stadium in New York. Cian Fraco is over one. He grounded out. And a breaking ball, low it away, one ball and one strike. Marky C. and Frapp is a pretty good hitter. Yeah, I talked about how he's been very valuable to him, playing a lot of different positions. 21 RBIs since he's been called up, and that's in only 25 ball games. Fly ball hit to right field pretty deep. Hurrying back, Carl Everett, warning track. Just enough room, and he makes the catch. So Carl Everett goes to the warning track. Gets just the long fly ball hit by RPC and Rocco. Two outs and nobody on, and Jody Reed will come to bat. The Padres, two runs, three hits. New York, one run, five hits. That scored their run on a home run by Rico Bronia. The Padres, Scott Livingstone drove in a run, and the second run scored on a wild pitch by Jason Isringhausen. Soft line drive, a one hopper to second. Jeff Kent has it. And quickly on to first, they go down quietly, one, two, three. So in the middle of the fourth inning at Jay Stadium, the Padres two, and the New York Mets one. Next Friday night, the Braves, the Cubs, the Athletics, the Yankees, or regional action. Baseball Night in America, next Friday on NBC. Ryan Thompson, the left fielder of the Mets, leading off the home fourth inning with the Padres winning two to one. Now tip no play. Right now the Dodgers are trailing Philadelphia five to nothing. The Colorado Rockies are trailing St. Louis three to one. So it could be an evening in which the Padres have a chance to gain on two clips. And a foul ball down the third baseline. No play. You know, Bob, when you talk to most of the Padre players, they don't want to talk about the wild card race. They want to win it. They want to win the, the, the NL West. That's their focus. It's nice that they have two options, though. I think it's great for the players because it's a tough time managing late in August and September. Good, good pitch by Willie Blair, and he strikes out Ryan Thompson. For Willie Blair, that is his third strikeout. One out and nobody on. And to the plate will come the rookie third baseman, Butch Husky. Butch Husky, a right-hand batter, singled his first time at bat. 
Bush was tearing up the International League this year. Led the league in homers, 28, and RBIs with 87. Swing and a miss, strike one. Seen a lot of first pitch breaking balls from Willie Blair for strikes. Good hard sliders and occasional slow curveball. As a starter, he gets to use all four of his pitches. High fly ball to center field, pretty deep. Moving back, Steve Finley he has it lined up and puts it away for the out. So Husky hit a towering fly to center. Two outs and nobody on in the home fourth inning. And the catcher, Kelly Stadette, comes to bat. Kelly lined a single to left field in the third. That's had a wonderful opportunity in the third inning. They had a run in on a home run by Rico Bronya. Three hits loaded the bases. But then Willie Blair came up with a big one. He got Damon Buford to hit into a double play to retire the side. Ground ball right side of the infield. Jody Reed on the first in time for the out. So the Mets are out quickly. No runs, no hits, and nobody left on. At the end of fourth, two to one, San Diego. It happens once every two years. I'm just thinking about it now. I'm getting goosebumps. Uh, it means that much. It, it's just hard to explain in words, but uh, goosebumps tell a lot. Golf's greatest unite for the honor for their country. And you wanted that trophy to go to all America and to your players, the guys who went out and played and played well enough to win. The Ryder Cup, September 23rd and 24th on NBC. Fifth inning now at Shea Stadium. The Padres with a 2-1 lead. Jason Isringhausen gave up three hits in the first inning. Has settled in. He has not allowed a hit since then. Have the cut and candy going. There's a hint of autumn in the air tonight in New York. It may disappear in the next day or two, but right now it feels wonderful. Brian Johnson, the catcher, takes a strike call. There's going to be a lot of excitement at this ballpark next year, Murph, because I think so too. The young pitching, they had a couple of players with some pop in their bat. It'll be an exciting team next year. Missing the outside corner. As we mentioned earlier, Pete Harney, who recently underwent arthroscopic surgery, will be healthy and ready for next year, along with Bobby Jones and the three youngsters, including Jason Isringhaus, who falls behind 3-0. The young left-hander Bill Pulsifer and a young, powerful right-hander by the name of Paul Wilson, who was the number one draft pick in the country out of Florida State a year ago. Now the count goes to three and one on Brian Johnson. Brian hitting at 256 on the year. Three homers and 24 RBIs. Swing and a miss. Brad Ausmus caught the game last night and is doing the bulk of the catching. But Brian Johnson has done a good job backing up. Three and two. Nobody on, nobody out. Fifth inning. Lace down the right field line. Will it stay fair? Foul ball. It is a foul ball by about a yard. You know, I think you really have to give the general manager of the Mets a lot of credit. Uh, Joe McElvaney made the trades. He was able to uh, get rid of Bonilla, get a couple of prospects. You got Buford and Alex Ochoa back in the deal. There's Joe McElvain right there. And you know, you get Brett Saberhagen to Colorado. He picks up Juan Acevedo, who I saw last year pitch in the Eastern League by far the best pitcher in the league. Foul ball again out of play. Joe Mack still has many friends on the San Diego ball. He was down on the field visiting with quite a few of them, including Chris Bochy this evening. Of course, he was the general manager of the Padres before coming back to New York to become general manager of the Mets. And there's Bruce Bochy, the manager. Into the air foul. That's out of play. I think if we look at what happened to the California Angels are a great example. Now, now you can go from last to first in a hurry now with free agency. There'll be a lot of free agents out in the market next year. The Mets have freed up a lot of money by trading Bonilla, Saberhagen, Butler, so they can fill in the position players that they need to go along with the young pitching staff. And the Angels are showing you can do it with young players. Fly ball hit over toward the right field line. Everett across the line and no play. Foul ball just out of the reach of Carl Everett. A lot of teams, Kansas City in particular, in the American League, have decided to go with their young players. 
Now, see here in Shea Stadium. These fans got to back up. Get out of there. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? That's my ball. <laughs> it's unbelievable what fans fans will do for the, the $9 baseball, I guess it is nowadays. San Diego leading 2-1. to one. We're in the fifth inning at Shea on a beautiful Saturday evening. No humidity, just so comfortable. Jason Isringhausen issues a walk. Walking the leadoff batter, that is the second walk he has given up. Moving to Sundays this fall are two of NBC's funniest comedies, Mad About You and Hope and Gloria. Must see TV, Mad About You and Hope and Gloria, NBC's Sundays this fall. Willie Blair is up probably bunning. Doesn't offer, and it's outside low. One ball and no strikes. Rico Bronia, reminiscent of Keith Hernandez, playing for the Mets. I mean, Keith used to be right on top of home plate, right on those pitchers. He would make the play at second base better than anybody I've ever seen. Yeah, I never saw anybody come in as close as the gold glove Keith Hernandez would. He took the butt off and let him swing away. <laughs> one ball, one strike. I like it. I like to see a little action. It was good for Isring House with the base hit earlier in the ball game. Bruce Boach is, yeah, well, okay. Rico, you want to charge that quick? We're going to hit it right down your throat. Willie Blair hasn't had a hit all year. But Bruce Boach, he felt this was the time. And a throw to first is not in time. As a hitter, Willie is 0 for 13. The Padres have two runs on three hits. The Mets one run on five hits. We're now in the fifth inning. Inside two balls and a strike. And I think we're becoming the landing area <laughs> at LaGuardia. Oh, this is a calm night. This is Saturday night. Or, no, it's Friday night. Isn't it? and we've heard very few commercial jets headed toward LaGuardia Airport. You know the funny thing that fundamental bunning of baseball. How many major leaguers do it right? And it's bunted, picked up by Bronia. The play will go to first base. So he gets the job done. Bronia throws to Kim. And they retire Willie Blair. I would think on a club that has Davy Lopes as a coach, you can expect your people to bunt pretty well. Yeah, and, and the per correct way yeah, is to catch the ball with the bat. Don't don't push it with the bat. Don't try to hit it hard. Catch the ball with the bat. Let the infielder feel. Expos are trying to break a six-game losing streak. They're playing at home at a living stadium against the San Francisco Giants. Well, even a team like the Expo, only six games out in the wild card. You can make up six games in the month of September. It gives them some, the players something to shoot for. Now Steve Finley, the leadoff batter, looks to pitch over at his low ball one. Finley hitting a 314 on the year, leading the National League in runs scored. He also has 32 stolen bases. He runs so gracefully. What I like it that in the leadoff spot, Finley's hitting. 73 for the season. Fouled back on the screen, one and one. That, that's what a manager dreams about. That's pretty good on base percentage, just that, that with hits alone. Barry Bonds leads the league in on base percentage. But Barry Bonds has already walked almost 100 times. Well, you, with Matt Williams out of their lineup, you can oh. afford to pitch around Bonds. Don't yeah. let him beat you. Well, Matt Williams is back now. Bonds will get more pitches to hit. Curve ball inside to Steve Finley. Two balls and a strike. Again, missing with the curveball. He throws a different type of curveball. Uses one knuckle on the ball. They call it a knuckle curve. It doesn't act like a knuckleball. Acts like a four-seam curveball, but a little tighter break. Line to the gap in right center field, running over to David Buford, and he makes the catch. Buford wheels and throws it back to the infield. That was well hit by Steve Finley. And a good job of cutting over by Damon Buford. Buford always has that happy look on his face. Well, what makes Finley so tough is he can spray the ball all over, line to line. Buford has to play straight up. He made up a lot of ground. See, that's the thing about speed. You know, you ask managers, what do they like? Guys that hit three-run homers. Uh, what do you rather have, power or speed? They say speed because it comes to the ballpark every day. Every day. Speed does not go into a slump. 
Bip Roberts is the batter. A runner on second and two men down. Curveball inside low. One ball and no strikes. San Diego two. New York one. Top of the fifth inning. St. Louis leading Colorado 3-1 in the fourth inning. And the Dodgers are trailing the Phillies 7-0 in the fourth inning. So it's quite an opportunity for the Padres. That is outside high. 2-0 and on Pip Roberts. One thing I noticed with Bip, he's flattened his bat out a little bit more. That, what that does with a flat bat makes you handle the ball up in the strike zone a little bit better. You can just drop the bat head right on the ball, keep the barrel of the bat above the baseball. Hit of the air to left field. Settling under it is Ryan Thompson, the Met left fielder. That retires the side. No runs, no hits, and a man left on. Middle of the fifth inning, the Padres two, and the Mets one. The Padres lead the Mets 2-1, to one, but we want to get you caught up with some big innings around the National League. This is Dodgers at Phillies and Hideo Nomo getting hit hard. And Greg Jeffries doing most of the hitting. He had a two-run home run off Nomo in the first, drops this triple in front of Roberto Kelly and allows two more to score. So Jeffries with four runs in this. It was a five-run third for the Phillies, and it's now 7-1, to one, Phillies over the Dodgers. Houston and Florida tied up at two in the fourth, and a rally by the Marlins, keyed by Andre Dawson with a three-run home run off Shane Reynolds. That's number 435 in Dawson's career. The Astros looking to avoid an eight-game losing streak. They trail five to two. Let's get back to Shea Stadium. Thank you, Hannah, for the update on other scores. Jason Isringhausen leading off for New York. And he gets his second hit of the game. He's now two for two as he singles to left field. And I was talking about the pitchers an easy out in the National League. He's hitting, he's four for 16 on the year, hitting 250. Damon Buford is the batter now. He's the best leadoff batter and center fielder. He hit into a double play with the bases loaded, one down in the second inning. That was a narrow escape for Willie Blair. Mets have out hit the Padres six to three, but the Padres have a two to one lead. The infield set up a double play depth at second and short. And he bunts the ball off the bound. Bobby get his Willie Blair. He can't get a play. And the Mets have two men on. A push punt by Damon Buford. And off the mound came Willie Blair at him, knowing against the speed of Buford that he had to get it done in a hurry, he wound up bobbling it. It's amazing. You know, it wasn't very good, a very good bunt, but that speed that we talked about that comes to the ballpark every day forces him to rush a little bit. See, Buford's trying to push the ball by the pitcher. Once you do that, it's an easy base hit. Now that, that's just a miscue by Blair trying to rush. That will be a sacrifice and an error charged. Sonny Siebert, the pitching coach, is going out to the mound. He wants to gather the infield around and talk about this situation. So Buford is on first. He reaches on the error charged to the pitcher on the sacrifice. So this is one of the plays that's seldom used in baseball, the push bunt. He's trying to just beat the pitcher. Get it past the pitcher, he doesn't. Fortunately for him, a little bobble. Now we go back to the action, first and second, and nobody out. And the number two hitter in the order, Jose Vizcaino, also a skillful bunter, is standing in against Willie Blair. Vizcaino hitless and two times at bat. And he's around to bunt but doesn't offer one ball and no strikes. And with all the infielders moving around, gives Dallas Green the option now. He's ahead in the count. Infielders moving all over the place. Second baseman's got to go to, to first base to cover with the first baseman charging. Ken Caminetti at third stands sideways looking towards second base. And he's in on the grass for the bunt. Well, for a minute there, they were going to put the wheel on Rick, but they didn't. That's where the third baseman charges real soon. They hope to lure the runner on second off the base. Didn't work that time. With all those infielders moving, if the batter can make contact, he could easily wind up with a base hit off of a ground ball. This guy, you know, is the hitter. First and second at nobody out. 
And he turns to bunt a call strike of the outside corner. One ball and one strike. Dallas Green's other option is let Jose swing away, being a left-hand hitter, and wants him to pull the ball in this situation. If he doesn't bunt, he takes the bunt off. That's where very lucky they made a deal with the Cubs to get Jose Vizcaino. They traded Anthony Young to the Cubs. At that time, the Cubs had not one but three shortstops. Ray Sanchez, Sean Dunstan, and Jose Vizcaino, and the Mets didn't have any. And Vizcaino has been a terrific player for New York. Bunted up the third baseline. Good play. Caminetti throws. Safe. Safe at first. The bases are loaded. He double pumped. And the throw to first not in time. And Bruce Bochy is on the way out. He wants to argue this one with the first base umpire, Steve Ridley. It was an awfully close play at first base. A look and listen play. And here's Bochy now to argue with Steve Ridley. He's saying that the throw beat him. Did he come off the base? What's the story? How? I think he simply beat him, but both Bruce Bochy is not convinced. The official score says it's a bunt base hit. Let's now have one run on seven hits. And right now, Willie Blair is looking at nine miles of bad road. The base is loaded and nobody out. And the Mets actually have been getting some bad breaks this week having a home run called foul that was fair. Here you see Kevin Hick takes a step back, bare hands the ball, takes a little extra time right there to tap the ball in the glove. Bang, bang, play at first. Usually they say uh, tie goes to the base runner. Very close. The umpires don't have the benefit of the slow motion replay. No, they sure don't. That was a look and listen play. Now the Mets have a marvelous opportunity. They trail the Padres two to one. They have the bases loaded and nobody out. And their number three hitter Carl Everett is the batter. Isringhausen is on third, Buford on second, and Vizcaino on first. Ball one is outside low. We'll get warm up action in a few moments in the Padre bullpen. It has not started as yet. I talked about how a flat bat handles the ball up in the strike zone. Well, a bat that's perpendicular, straight up and down, usually are better low ball hitter. Breaking ball low. Why is it Rick Saron? But almost all the left hand hitters are good low ball hitters. <laughs> it's unbelievable. They have that one sweet spot down and in. They very rarely miss it. Ronya earlier in the ball game took a fastball down and in and hit it nine miles to right field. 2-0 the count on Vizcaino. Well hit fly ball. Deep to right field. It may go. Grand slam. Carl oh, Everett, a grand slam home run. The Mets have a 5-2 to two lead. Shot by Carl Everett. Again, Murph, it looked like a fastball in the inner part of the plate. You work behind the count. Major League hitters sit on fastballs. They usually don't hit them that far, but that's a long grand slam. Well, Carl Everett, his 10th home run of the year. Take a look at this swing, Rick. Takes a little longer to get the ball. You see the ball's down and in. We just talked about it, Murph. And they very rarely miss that ball. He knows it's gone all the way. Both hands on the bat. What I like, he didn't stare and, and look at it too long. Now the hitter is Jeff Kipp. Grand slam home run for Carl Everett. He's really putting up numbers. He's coming back from AAA Norfolk. Everett now has 10 home runs and 28 RBIs in a very brief period of time. And a pitch that is inside, one ball and one strike. So what had been a 2-1 to one San Diego lead is now a 5 to 2 lead for the New York Mets. Four RBIs for Carl Everett. Drive hit in the air to right field right at Tony Gwynn. Tony grabs it for the out. And that is the first out in the fifth inning. Well, I talked about how the Mets have all of a sudden, since the All Star break, playing great baseball. The Dodgers came in here last weekend thinking they had a cakewalk. They got swept by the Mets. 
San Diego, very similar situation. Last night, lose a, a heartbreaker with three runs in the bottom of the ninth, and they find themselves trailing again tonight. Mets have won six of their last eight ball games. And since the All-Star break, their record is 22 wins and 18 losses. So Dallas Green has his young club really fighting hard and playing well. Rico Bronia is the hitter. And a breaking ball, one ball and one strike. And I think it would be a shame for Dallas if he doesn't get to see the, the fruits of everything that's coming up through the minor league system. They've been a little non-committal about his tenure after this year. Well, Joe, General Manager Joe McElveen has said all year long he wanted to wait until the season was over and have a chance to evaluate things. And he hasn't changed his format in any way at all. He said when the season is over, we'll sit down. Dallas Green, of course, has had a marvelous career. He won a world championship for the Philadelphia Phillies in 1980. And they had not won a championship in so many, many years. Inside to Rico Bronia. Now two and two. Then Dallas moved on to Chicago, became the general manager. And lo and behold, he put together a winner there for the Chicago Cubs. Full count going three and two on Rico Bronia. Bronia hit his 15th home run of the year in the second inning. So home runs have knocked in all five of the New York runs. Lined hard, a base hit down the right field line. Scooting over is Tony Gwynn. Tony will hold Bronia to a single. That's her hitting Willie Blair hard here in the fifth inning. It was a real key in this inning. Looks like Rico got a hold of a high changeup. Really doesn't try to pull the ball, but now here comes Bruce Bochy. The Padres skipper is on his way. Dustin Herbertson is getting ready in the bullpen. This might very well be all for Willie Blair. Let's keep an eye on Bochy. Yep. We'll have a new pitcher for the San Diego Padres. It'll be Dusty Hermanson. We have a break in the action. We'll be back in just a moment. Next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern, the thrills and excitement of Notre Dame football return to NBC. The record-setting tandem of quarterback Ron Paulus and receiver Derek Mays lead college football's most legendary team, the Fighting Irish, as they kick off their 95 season against the Wildcats of Northwestern. Notre Dame football is home on NBC. Justin Hermanson that comes on to pitch for the Padres. Willie Blair is leaving. Willie in four and a third allowed five runs and nine hits. He walked one and struck out three. This is Dustin Hermanson and Rick Cerrone. He got to the big leagues in a hurry. He was a number one draft pick by the San Diego Padres only a year ago. And here he is pitching in the big leagues. Last year, his first year in pro ball. He pitched at Wichita, he pitched in Las Vegas, and now he's pitching in the big leagues. Well, you see 16 innings, 14 walks, and 18 hits. The biggest question mark, you know, when you rush a young pitcher, which is what San Diego's done, he's learning on the job. You have to coach more at the big league level. He's got a real heavy, hard sinker to go along with a, a true slider, a smaller slider, when I try say a true one, smaller break, not the big sweeping breaking ball. So Dustin Hermanson, and not surprisingly, has had control problems so far this year. Boy, he can throw it hard. And a swing and a miss by Ryan Thompson, strike one. Dustin Hermanson is from Springfield, Ohio. Breaking ball outside low, one ball and one strike. Let's now have a 5-2 lead. We're in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Dodgers are losing to the Phillies 8-2. Colorado Rockies have rallied to tie St. Louis 3-3. That is outside and low from Dustin Hermanson. Here from the center field camera, you see the nice small slider. Hard. Everything is hard from Dustin. Heavy sinker on the right-hand hitter's hands. So you have to protect one way or the other, one zone, either protect inside or away. And a swing and a miss, two and two. You know, he's averaged almost a walk per inning, and that'll get you killed. 
Yeah, and, I, and I talked about how he's been rushed to the big leagues here after only one year of pro ball. And you have to teach a little bit more on the big league level. That's something that's a little bit different nowadays. Well, pitchers are really rushed along these days. There's such a shortage of good pitching. A swing and a miss, and Ryan Thompson has been retired. So Ryan goes down swinging. It'll bring up Butch Huskin. One of the problems with Ryan, he's such a free swinger. He extends the zone. That ball, it looks good to hit eye level, but you can't catch up to it. Especially, he's throwing above 90 miles an hour. It looks nice to hit up there, but it's tough to get on top of a high fastball. Now Butch Husky, the rookie third baseman, comes to bat. Had a marvelous year playing for Toby Hera down at Norfolk in the International League. 28 home runs, 87 RBIs. And he wants to be the next third baseman for the New York Mets. Outside at low. Mets had a youngster, 21 years old, Edgardo Alfonso, playing third all year. He was terrific, but unfortunately, he suffered a herniated disc. May or may not play again this year. But he's only 21, and he's a terrific prospect. So Dustin Hermanson has the hitter's fool for the moment. One ball and one strike. He's won three and lost only one. It gets frustrating if you're the manager of the pitching coach, Sonny Siebert. You know, you see such a great arm. You want him to harness it in the strike zone. Be wild in the strike zone if you can. Low and away, two balls and a strike to Butch Husky. New York five runs on nine hits. San Diego two runs on three hits. Two games remaining in this four-game series. A night game tomorrow night, a day game on Sunday. Padres return home to San Diego for a nine-game homestead. Good fastball by Hermanson. Two balls and two strikes. You see the Met hitters not really having good swings right now. Now this is, you know, a different look, a different pitcher that's been throwing. You know, Willie Blair was throwing an awful lot of breaking balls. Now you have to gear it up as a hitter. He's coming in there 90 plus. You have to get the bat started a little bit quicker. And what that does, Murph, you wind up pulling off balls. You'll swing at more bad pitches when a pitcher throws hard because you have to get the bat started. That's low and away, three and two. Every hitter has his own way of getting the bat in motion. Yeah, you know what? That's why I always talk about pitching inside. The guys that throw soft, left-handers that throw soft, make their living on change-ups, they have to pitch inside more than, say, a Roger Clemens. Because guys are looking to cheat on him, get the bat out. High fly ball hit deep for center field. Way, way back it may go. Gone. Butch Husky, a two-run over. Oh, what a shot that was. His second home run for the Mets. Just coming up from Norfolk of the International League. What a monster of a fly ball. It clears the wall in deep left center. Here you see short stride. You connect with that, that fastball that's over 90 miles an hour. Is it me or does Husky hit the ball extremely high? It's unbelievable. That ball, ball was like in stages up in the air. We haven't seen fly balls around Shea Stadium like that since the days of David Arthur King. That's, you know what? Uh, that's exactly what I thought about. That ball was like a rocket taking off couple of different stages. Mets are now hit three home runs tonight. You know, I give uh, Butch Husky a lot of credit. Last night, remember, he had to come out of the ball game, fouled the ball off his foot. They took him for x-rays. It wasn't broken. Back in the lineup tonight. You know, young guys come up from the minor leagues. It takes an awful lot to get them out of a lineup. And he's hit by a pitch ball. He just turns his shoulder into that. So the Mets have now batted around to have their fifth hitter coming up in the inning. This is a monster inning, and what happened here? Did he throw somebody out? I think he warned him, warned him for throwing at the hitter, but this is a breaking ball that stays in. Now, if you're the home plate umpire, Bill Hahn, he has to realize it's a breaking ball. He's not trying to hit somebody with a breaking ball. Well, Bill Hahn is serving a warning saying we'll have no more of it. He lets Bruce Bochy know. Now he lets the Mets dugout know. This is quite an inning for the New York Mets. I mean, Bruce is saying the same thing. Jeez, come on, let's go. That's a breaking ball. He's not trying to hit anybody. 
<laughs> Dick fifth inning for New York. The Mets have scored six runs on five hits. They've had a grand slam home run by Carl Everett, a two run homer by Butch Husky. Jason Isringhausen led off this inning. The Mets pitcher single in left field. Now he bats for the second time. Isringhausen is two for two. And a ground ball hit to third. Caminetti to second. They have the force play, and that retires the side. So the Mets scored at six runs on five hits, and they have one left. At the end of six. Next Sunday, the NFL on NBC at a special time, 12 noon. Joe Montana joins the best crew in the business for a big one-hour season preview. Then, two teams with Super Bowl dreams collide as Testaverde and the Browns tackle Bledsoe and the Patriots. Original action. Kickoff 95, the NFL on NBC. Made in America, played in America. New York 7 and the Padres 2 as we go now to the sixth inning. And Tony Quinn will be coming up against Jason Isringhausen. So the rookie right-hander from Brighton, Illinois, who had a shaky first inning, Rick Cerrone since then over the next four has just been superb. And it's really been his fastball. He's, he's jammed an awful lot of the Padre hitters, spotting his fastball, still having a little trouble throwing his curveball for strikes. But the biggest thing is working ahead in the count. New York seven runs on ten hits. The Padres two runs on three hits. They get all three in the very first inning. Tony Gwynn singled a center in the first, and Tony would later score a run. Inside low by Jason Isringhausen. So right now the Mets are leading the Padres seven to two. The Phillies lead the Dodgers ten to two. The Rockies and Cardinals are tied three three in the sixth inning. The National League West, the only close race in Major League Baseball. That's fouled back into the stands and out of play. You know, everybody wonders what makes Tony Gwynn such a good hitter. Well, it's good balance, a good stance. There he is. He's got a broken toe, but he's still leading the National League in hitting. And I talked to him about the broken toe. I said, Tony, Charlie Lau was one of my batting instructors. He talked about striding and landing on eggs. Land real soft. And he says, you know, Rick, I know exactly what you're talking about. He says, yeah, that works. You know, if it was my back foot that I had a broken toe on, probably wouldn't be playing. But you're right. You land on eggs. You take a nice, soft stride. And that's a good changeup. Israel House really hasn't shown that today. Comes right back and jams it with a fastball in. Now Kent throws on to Bergia, and that retires Tony Gwynn. One out and nobody on. Tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern, join NBC Sports for another hard-hitting NFL preseason matchup. The Kansas City Chiefs, whose tough defense is led by sack specialist Derek Thomas, will try to stop Pro Bowl receiver Chris Carter and the Minnesota Vikings. That's Kansas City versus Minnesota tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern. Foul back and out of play. So it's the last preseason stop here on NBC as we take you all the way to the Super Bowl, number 30 in Arizona. Inside and low now to Ken Caminetti. We just mentioned that the Phillies are leading the Dodgers 10 to 2. And Colorado and St. Louis are tied. Line drive to right field. That's a base hit. Taken on a hop by Carl Everett. So the Padres have their fourth hit of the game off Jason Isringhausen. But it's interesting to notice their first hit for Cerrone since the opening inning. Yeah, Izzy's really settled down. Kim and Itty is some kind of hot. Three hits last night, two tonight. You get in a little groove like that. You're always hitting in good counts, Murph. It seems like you're always hitting 2 1, 3 1 counts. You're getting good fastballs to hit. You take the close balls. That's the way a good hitter likes to operate. There goes the runner. Big jump, no throw. So Caminetti got a huge jump on Jason Isringhausen. A stolen base. Well, Dallas Green let Rico play behind Caminetti. Still early in the ball game, only in the top of the six. He'll take that base. If you're going to give him second, he'll take it every time. Now, 
Izzy, as his teammates call him, misses low inside. Two balls and no strikes. Things are looking awfully good for the future of the New York Mets with young people like Jason Isringhausen just up from the minor leagues. Ground ball toward the hole, a base hit going into right field. Rounding third is Caminetti. The throw coming in, not in time, a rough scores. So a single to right for Scott Livingstone. He drives home Ken Caminetti. And it is a 7 to 3 ball game. We talked about how Caminetti really took advantage of it, took the base. Now the, you know, 7 to 3. One good thing about Everett's throw is that it was low enough to hold the runner at first base, you know, if you hit the cutoff man. A little close at the plate. The Nets trying to make the swiping tag and catch the ball all in the same motion. Very difficult to do. Arky C. and Franco playing shortstop, right hand hitter with some power. And taken low, handled by Kelly Sinet. One ball and no strikes. New York 7 10 0, the Padres 3 5 and 1. We're in the sixth inning at Shea Stadium. Now you see Rico Dallas Green says OK all right maybe it's a little too early to play behind the runners right back on first base no free passes Jason Isringhausen foul ball back on the screen Jason is from Brighton Illinois which is actually closer to St. Louis than Chicago what a tremendous rush to the big leagues for Jason. He was nine and one pitching triple A ball at Norfolk this year. His earned run average was 1.55. Last year, he was a sensation at Binghamton. Curveball outside low, two and one. And you know what else, Murph? He was a 44th round draft pick. So you don't, yeah, you don't have to be the big number one hot shot off the campus. Here's a guy, 44th round. Give a lot of credit to the scout that signed him. Saw something he liked. That is what you call good scouting. I don't think he played all that much in high school, and it was a good job of scouting. You know, too, Murph, it's so hard to predict and project how a high school kid is going to turn out. Oh, you have no idea, really. Inside and high. Most big league ball clubs nowadays, with their first or second choice in the draft, will usually take a college player. Yeah, because you're, he's already 21 years old. He's pretty much grown. He's, he's a he's a man at 21. You know what to expect, and you hope he succeeds. Whereas an 18 year old young kid, there's a line drive through the middle of base hit to center field for Cian Franco, rounding second and holding there Scott Livingstone. Funny how it goes. Isringhausen allowed three hits in the first inning, had not allowed a hit since then, and now he's allowed three in a row here in the sixth inning. The only thing you could think about is that there was a real long inning with the Mets batting around in the bottom of the fifth. You sit on the bench an awful long time. He got to hit twice that inning. Greg Pavlik, the pitch pitching coach of the New York Mets, is at the mound now talking with Jason Ising Isinghausen. In the New York Mets bullpen, number 34 is Bloss Minor. Bloss has just returned after being on the disabled list with a cracked rib. But he's feeling good again, and if Jason needs to be picked up, we'll see Bloss Minor. Greg Pavlik was the bullpen coach when I played for the Mets in 91. He says, it's a pleasure being away from me and Franco. He said, I can <laughs> you imagine guys, that. <laughs> you guys used to drive me nuts down there in the bullpen. <laughs> Franco's a fun guy to be around. I told Johnny, I said, you're going to be 35 years old. They get rid of you. The average age on the Mets will be down to 22 years old. 88 pitches thrown so far by Jason Isringhausen. It's a cool and a comfortable night in New York. And the pitch is taken high by Jody Reed. Reed, the second baseman, has drawn a walk and grounded out second to first. Jody used to hit so many doubles in Boston. I mean, he has a short, quick swing. The ball middle of plate in, he can really turn on. 
He fakes a bunt, one ball, one strike. Right now, the Padres, with a long base hit, could get right back into this ball game. They are trailing seven to three. They have runners on first and second with one man out. Sign of a real good team. Doesn't quit. You give up the grand slam. You come right back and you battle. Hit hard. Oh, look out. Foul ball over the head of a ducking Greg Nettles coaching at third base. I tell you, it's nice to come to the ballpark and see some old friends. Yeah, Greg Nettles is certainly one. <laughs> Puff, he would always start the trouble, and the next thing you know, he'd never be around. <laughs> Boy, he could play third. He could flash a lot of leather. In addition to hitting home runs. One and two, the count. Mets hoping to turn a double play, have the infield at double play depth. Got the inside corner, strike three call. So Jody Reed called out on strikes, two men away. As he finally gets the curveball to go over the plate, this one starts at Jody and almost backed up. I mean, that ball came down 12, like Jim Cotton would say, 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock, straight over the t off the table. That's a breaking ball. He regrets taking it because it's on the inside part of the plate. Usually he can do some damage with it. Now the hitter is the number eight man in the batting order, Brian Johnson, the catcher. Foul ball back in the stands, strike one. 7-3, New York meeting. We're at the top of the sixth. Game three of the series tomorrow night. Game four, a Sunday afternoon game at Shea Stadium. After the Sunday game, the Padres fly home and open a nine-game homestead. Late swing foul ball back over the dugout and into the crowd. Well, this is Jason needs to get the number eight hitter. He needs to get Johnson out. You don't want to see the pinch hitter coming up next in Melvin Nieves. This is the batter he wants. With two outs, you've got to get the number eight hitter out in the lineup. You saw a couple of late swings on fastballs. The one thing you don't want to do as a catcher, call the slow breaking ball to speed up the hitter's bat. You know, he's having trouble handling the fastball. Go ahead and keep, stay right with it. Spot the fastball away. Chopper fouled on the third base line. Tom Suter would say, wherever he's starting pitching, usually there'll be two or three times in the course of a ball game, if you're going to win, you absolutely have to get the hitter up. Yeah, and this is Izzy's guy right here. Don't want to see the pinch hitter as the tying run. Got to get the number eight hitter out. Two strike count on Brian Johnson. No, it's Isringhausen who slows the pace down. You notice that? I was thinking the exact same thing. That runner on base, now he's more deliberate. Struck him out. Good job. Third strikeout for the sixth inning. One run on three hits. And in the middle of the sixth inning, the Mets seven and the Padres three. Next Friday night, the Braves, the Cubs, the Athletics, the Yankees, or regional action. Baseball Night in America, next Friday on NBC. In the last of the sixth inning at Shea Stadium, New York seven runs on ten hits. The Padres three runs on six hits. Greg Pavlik and Dallas Green are talking with 22-year-old Jason Isringhausen. They may be deciding that he has worked enough for one night. He got off to a sluggy start, gave up two runs, three hits in the first inning, and then settled in and pitched outstanding baseball. Then in the sixth inning, he suddenly gave up three hits and one more run. Yeah, it's amazing how he got the called strike three on Jody Reed when he needed it and struck out the number eight hitter, Brian Johnson, in the in scoring position. Good job of pitching. Damon Buford, the Mets leadoff batter, facing Dustin Herbertson. Dustin came on in the last inning when the Mets had a six-run inning. He gave up a two-run homer to Butch Husky. Pretty good-looking fastball for a strike call. And you can see how the catcher moves in and out. You try not to move too early because hitters will tend to peak once in a while and see low. They can tell pitch by location. 
And a breaking ball wide. One of the keys to that successful inning in the fifth inning for New York was a push bunt. Right, that, that uh, by Damon Buford. That Willie Blair kind of rushed on. That set up the whole inning. Swing and a miss. Oh, good high hard one. So Hermanson has his second strikeout. Shortstop, Baseball Night in America is brought to you by Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Ground ball hit to second. Jody Reed throws to first to get Jose Vizcaino. And Pizza Hut. You'll love the stuff we're made of. Carl Everett is getting a good hand from the crowd of Shea. His last at bat, he produced a grand slam home run. San Diego had a 2-1 lead. And Everett connected for a grand slam, putting the New York Mets into the lead. Later in the inning, Butch Husky would hit a two-run homer. So the Mets have scored seven runs. And all have been driven home by home runs. Outside high, ball one. Now, if you're ever, you, you just hit a 2 0 fastball for a grand slam. You got to be a little bit quicker here because Hermanson is throwing a little bit harder. Get, get it early, a little bit sooner. There's a low fastball. You know, guys on the bench talk. Oh, this guy's rushing it up here. Don't get cheated. So it's one ball and one strike on Carl Everett. Ten homers and 28 runs batted in. A very short period of time. Two one delivery missing low three and one. So you know it looks like he's very relaxed at the plate. Not, not a lot of tension in the swing. I really think that's important. Let your wrist do the talking. With the bat fly through the hitting area. And it's taken high. Ball four. Everett has reached on a walk. And Rick, here's the grand slam that he hit earlier in the ball game. See how he keeps his hands down. Now watch how they get up to the hitting area. That sounded loud and long. That brings back a lot of bad memories. The long one finger I used to put down. Long home runs. That's ball. You are on your way out of the ballpark. Sometimes as a catcher, you wanted to put your glove in the way. Hey, this one's going to go too far. Now the hitter is Jeff Kent, the cleanup batter. Jeff has one for three. In the dirt, but blocked nicely by Brian Johnson. 7-3, Mets lead. We're in the home half of the sixth inning. The one thing Everett's going to learn right now, he's only stolen one out of six. He's been caught five times stealing. He's got good speed, but it's important to learn the pitchers. You know, see what you can. Try to guess breaking ball counts. You know, giving advantage, trying to steal bases. I think that all comes with being up in the big leagues, learning the game. Good pitch to Jeff Kent. One ball and one strike. You can bet they'll work long and hard on those things in spring training. You, you know, coaches could talk to you about them, but you really have to experience them for yourself. Start reading pitchers' moves. See how far you can get off the base. Ground ball toward the hole. And into left field. The ball went flying right by Kim Caminetti. So the Mets have first and second with two men away. This is a hot corner shot. I don't know if, if Ken saw that ball off the bat right away. He tries to ole it a little bit at third base. So many times I've seen Caminetti dive for that ball knock it down and throw runners out that is 11 hits now for New York and it brings to the plate Rico Gronia Gronia with a good night he's two for three a single and a home run is 15th of the year the Mets have hit three home runs accounting for all seven of their runs they lead seven to three in the home sixth inning on this homestand the Mets have won six while losing only three and a ground ball toward the hole and that's a base hit to right field. There'll be no throw at the plate. Gwen is throwing to third, and he's saved for third base. 
It is now 8-3 New York. Gronje getting his third hit of the game. That brings home Carl Everett. Rico takes a breaking ball, pulls it in the hole. Tony Gwynn always makes the right play. Very rarely will you see him make bad plays. Very good throw to third base. Had no play at home. Made it close at third. He's playing on a broken toe. You know, now the Mets have scored a run starting with two outs and nobody on. The walk to Carl Everett started the, the inning for New York. And singles by Jeff Kinn and Rico Bronia bring in a run. Mets now with a five run lead, eight to three. Ryan Thompson batting. Lined hard down the left field line. That is a base hit going into the corner. Kent has come in to score the ninth run. Racing for second, Ryan Thompson. So they're hitting Dustin Herbertson hard. A double to left. For Ryan Thompson brings home Jeff Kent. Now the Mets have second and third. This all started with two outs. Two outs in the base on balls. And the last two hard hit balls have been sliders in the middle of the plate. Ryan Thompson gets the slider, a little bit of a long swing. The slider will give a hitter a chance to get the bat head yeah. through the hitting area. Takes a hanging slider and hits it off the left field wall. Sonny Siebert, the pitching coach, will go to the mound. We do have warm up action in the Padre bullpen. Things going very well for Dallas Green's New York Mets. And they now lead the Padres by a score of 9 to 3. Malone is the warm up pitcher for the Padres. He came from the Seattle Mariners in the deal that sent Andy Venice to Seattle. Grew up not too far from here, Murph. Went to Bergenfield High School in New Jersey. A lot of fans here tonight for him. Yeah, he must be happy to be here at Shea. Low outside, ball one. That's the way you were, Rick Cerrone. Well, you I know. Up in the area and played baseball at Seton Hall. You get an opportunity to play for your hometown team. It's something special. Even as a visiting player, you play at the stadiums you grew up watching as a kid. There's a drive in the air to left field. Moving back to make the grab is Pip Roberts. And so at the end of six, the Mets now have a nine to three lead. Key spot of the batting order. And Tim Bogar, who's coming in to play third, will be batting ninth, meaning he will get a turn at bat in the seventh inning. For Jason Isringhausen, the 22-year-old rookie who made his eighth start of the year here tonight, he leaves after six innings. He allowed three runs, six hits. He walked two, and he struck out three. Melvin Nieves is the pinch hitter. Batting for Dustin Hermanson. And that's off the outside corner. One ball, one strike. Padres really had high hopes for Nieves, but really struggled this year. They're still hoping that he will develop. And a breaking ball, swung and missed. Lost Miner appearing for the first time. He's been out for over three weeks. He suffered a fractured rib. Davis with 71 strikeouts and 180 at bats. Now it's out of the strike zone. Two balls, two strikes. New York, nine runs, 13 hits. The Padres, three runs, six hits. And the count goes full, three and two. It's hard to believe what the Phillies are doing to the Dodgers tonight. They are leading the Dodgers 17 to 3 in the fifth inning. Wow. And Hideo Nomo started that ball game. Struck him out. Now it's time for tonight's Toyota Diamond Dust baseball fact. Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig hit home runs in the same game 73 times. Which pair of teammates homered in the same game more than Ruth and Gary? Now that's what I call a tough question. <laughs> more than Ruth and Gary? What do you think? There was or there wasn't? <laughs> I'd say yes. <laughs> yeah, there must have been somebody. I have no idea. <laughs> more than 73 in the same game. 
We'll have the answer for you in the bottom half of the inning. Steve Finley is the hitter. Finley, he came out of the game hitting at 314, has gone 0 for 3. Grounded out twice and lined the ball hard to center field. And it's way outside. It's been an unusual night for the Mets. They have been winning with pitching and defense, winning a lot of low scoring games. Tonight they've hit a ton. Yeah, that's what I, I asked you before the ball game. They're six and three on the current home standing, hitting as a team 168. Tonight they explode. And uh, he made him look bad on that breaking ball. Two balls and two strikes. You know you're getting great pitching if you're six and three. And your hitters are combined 168 coming into tonight's ball game. You're getting great pitching. That's you're not, what Dallas likes. Yeah, you're not giving up hardly anything when you do that. That is inside and low. Bloss Miner on the mound. Bloss is three and two this year. Has pitched pretty well coming out of the bullpen. 393 earned run average. Last three years he pitched for Jimmy Leland. And the fastball strike three call to the hitter door. Steve Finley was walking away. He knew he'd been had. So two strikeouts already for Bloss Miner. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent from the Office of the Commissioner. Hit by Vip Roberts, foul back into the crowd. That's what you like to see Blouse do, come out, throw strikes. He's using his slider, his fork ball, but his bread and butter is still the number one, the fastball. Off the inside corner. Bip Roberts is 0 for 3 here this evening. He has popped to left, line to third, and fly to left field. Ground ball toward the right side. Jeff Kent looks it into his glove. And on to Bronya. That retires the side. They're down 1, 2, 3. In the middle of the seventh inning at Shea Stadium, the Mets 9 to the Padres 3. Malone, a left-hander on now to pitch for the San Diego Padres. He has pitched well since joining San Diego. He became a Padre in the trade that sent Andy Bennis to the Seattle Mariners. So Ron Malone is on. Real good overhand fastball, high fastballs. He has trouble controlling his fastball, but a great changeup. Sonny Siebert said that can show his changeup. Hitters can know it's coming and they still can't hit his changeup. Kelly Sedet, the Mets catcher, leading off. And he takes a fastball for a strike call. The starting pitcher, Willie Blair, gave up six runs. Dustin Hermanson allowed three. The base hit that Kelly Stinnett had in the second inning broke up a one for 25 slump. I've been there. I know what that's yeah, like. That's tough. Those, those are hurt. They're painful. <laughs> you'll, you'll take a broken bat single, anything to stop, get you off that collar. That's a tough collar. That cuts into your sleep. Oh, it? boy. A 0 for 10 grows into a 1 for 25 in a hurry. 9-3 New York, last half of the seventh inning. And a foul ball upstairs in the mezzanine section, no play. It's interesting, the best minute race in baseball is the National League West. But right now, tonight, every team in the National League West is losing. The Giants trail Montreal nine, nine to nothing. The Dodgers are trailing the Phillies, unbelievably, 17 to four, a game Madeo Nomo started. And a swing and a miss, there's that good changeup. And here's the answer to our quiz. Third baseman, Tim Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig hit home runs in the same game 73 times. Which pair of teammates homered in the same game more than Ruth and Gehrig? The answer, the Braves' Hank Aaron and Eddie Matthews 
homer to the same game 75 times. <laughs> Tough. I mean, just when you think as a pitcher, you, you, you handled Hank. Here comes Eddie Matthews and hits another one at him. <laughs> it's got to be a nightmare. Tim Bogar is batting for the first time tonight. He came in on a double switch. Bogar is playing third and batting number nine in the batting order. Ron Malone is pitching in relief now for the Padres. Foul ball back out of play. You know, the thing about Malone, you can't just sit on his changeup. You know he's got a real good one, but you have to protect against the fastball. Look at the Phillies. That's incredible. 17 to 4. And Hideo Nomo was the starting pitcher in that ball game. Every team in the National League West is behind right now. And a fastball up high to Timmy Bogar. One ball and two strikes. Bogar has hit left handed pitching sensationally this year. He struggles against right handers, but he certainly has hit left handers. Hitting about 400 against left handed pitching. That is in for a strike three call. There's that good motion again on the changeup. What makes it so good is it's the same motion as his fastball. Watch Malone here. I mean, this is great deception. Same motion, and it just stops on the way to the plate. A hitter just freezes on that changeup. So two strikes out, strikeouts in a row for Ron Malone. Top of the batting order, and the Mets leadoff hitter, Damon Buford. And it's popped foul outside first base. Getting under it and waiting and making the catch is Scott Livingstone. So a very good inning for Ron Malone. The Mets are down one, two, three. At the end of seven, the Mets nine and the Padres three. Mets lead the Padres 9-3. We wanted to show you a couple of spectacular individual performances on the night. Dodgers in Philly. When Greg Jeffries in the fifth just needs a double to hit for the cycle. And he gets it. The first Philly cycle since Johnny Callison in 1963. And a spectacular effort as he hits for the cycle in just five innings. Also, Phillies pitcher Jeff Juden with a grand slam. They rock Hideo Nomo. It's 17-4 to Phillies. Also, Detroit at Cleveland tonight. And Albert Bell... What a way to celebrate his 29th birthday. This is his second home run on the night. Came in the sixth inning off John Doherty. He also had a home run in the second inning. Carlos Baerga Baer driving in a couple of runs. It's 5-3. Thank you very much, Hannah. Great Jeffries has hit for the cycle in five innings. Wow. <laughs> 2-1 count now on Tony Gwynn. And a fly ball hit the left field. A tough play. It may go foul into the stands. And over in the corner, it is out of the reach of Ryan Thompson. Tony Gwynn leading off. We're now in the eighth inning at Shea. The Mets are leading the Padres 9-3. So Greg Jeffries, whose bat has been unusually quiet this year for, for Jeffries, a very talented hitter, tonight has hit for the cycle. And the pitcher, Jeff Juden, hit a grand slam. Wow. That is over, and Gwynn is called out on strikes. That happens about once a week. That's only his 11th strikeout for the year. He strikes out once every 43.9 times. He has the toughest man in the National League to strike out. You know, they're not seeing the ball off of Miner very well. I mean, this ball is on him in a hurry, and that's very unusual for Tony. He, this is his first appearance as coming off the DL yesterday. And the pitch is outside to Ken Caminetti. Tony Gwynn in the game tonight. One hit four times at bat. He singled his first time up. That's about hit San Diego 13 to 6 and lead 9 to 3. There's a fastball. One yeah. ball, one strike. And Murph, I could see why the hit the ball is getting on the hitters in a hurry. He short arms the ball. He almost throws it like a catcher. It comes out of his uniform. Next thing you know, the ball's on top of him. You can watch from his delivery. Short. Foul to back behind third, one and two. Yeah, hitters are taught to look for an area where the ball, the pitcher's going to release the ball. Usually it's up high. You know, some guys are low three quarters. Miner comes almost right out of his uniform. And the next thing you know, he's throwing 90 miles an hour, so the ball gets in on you in a hurry. One and two on Ken Caminetti. Jammed him that time and a foul ball back into the stands. Count holding it, one ball and two strikes.
if things continue the way they are right now, the Padres will stay four games out of first place as we watch See Los Miners. short arms and his shorts arm, and it's coming right out of his uniform top, and they're not getting good hacks off. And that is taken for strike three. So Caminetti has been struck out. Wow, Los Miner has faced five batters since coming in the game. He has struck out four of the five. Now, as a hitter, you've been jammed a couple of times, so you have to start it a little bit quicker, and now he comes with the fork ball. You're speeding up the bat, like we talked about when a guy rushes a ball up there, and you'll swing at more bad pitches like Caminiti just did. Scott Livingstone, the first baseman for San Diego, has two for three, and he has knocked in two of their three runs. It is taken ball one. The other run scored on a wild pitch. So Livingstone has the only Padre RBIs today. The Mets attack has been the home run. Taken low. Rigo Bronia, a home run with the bases clear. Carl Everett, a grand slam, and Butch Husky, a two run homer. In the air to center field on the run, Buford, he'll be there. He makes the catch. And the inning is over. They go down one, two, three. In the middle of the eighth inning is Shea. The Mets nine and the Padres three. Leading off for the Mets. Tony, you remember, you'll recall his playing with a broken toe. And Bryce Flory comes on to do the pitching. Flory is two and one with a 3.07 ERA. 55 innings. He's allowed just 39 hits. He's had good stuff. So Bryce Flory will face the Mets in the last of the eighth inning. They have now used Willie Blair, Dustin Hermanson, Ron Ballone, and Bryce Flory. And a swing and a miss by Jose Vizcaino. And I think Murph will getting a look at if the Padres are going to make a run at it, they're going to count on the young pitchers setting him up. The setup guys getting to Trevor Hoffman, who's been very good this year. The young rookie setup guys like Flory, Hermanson, Ballone. They're going to have to do the job, and that's a lot to count on when you're in a pennant race with all rookies as your setup man. Well, it's an interesting night of the National League West, which has the best race of the game. There's a drive into short left field, a base hit for Jose Vizcaino. For the Mets shortstop, that's his second hit of the night. And the Mets now have 14 base hits. They have not been hitting hardly at all, but tonight they break out. They have nine runs on 14 hits, and they have three home runs, including a grand slam by Carl Everett. How about the year Reggie Sanders having for Cincinnati? He's had a marvelous year. Tonight. Carl Everett is one for two, a grand slam in the fifth inning, and he has walked twice. That's outside, one ball and no strikes. 15,644 the paid crowd tonight at Shea Stadium. Bouncing ball hit towards short, cut off by Caminetti. The throw, oh, just got him. He's out at first base. Caminetti throwing out a speedy runner in Everett. No question about the arm strength now on Caminetti. It's back. Made some errors early in the season because of his arm strength. You can hang some clothes there on that rope. Uh, he's always in a howitzer for a throwing arm. And Caminetti has quite a glove around third. He's a very, very good third baseman. Now, let me ask you, Mark, do you like the uh, goatee, the, the Fu Manchu look? I don't mind it. I don't mind it. But, you know, it seems to be the look the pitchers want more makes, than position players. Yeah, it makes them look meaner. Is that what it is? Try to intimidate the hitters. And a balk has been called on Bryce Flory. And so Everett will go, this guy will go to third on a balk. Maybe it wasn't a balk. Maybe he went to his mouth. Was it walking Bob Davidson, the third base umpire, <laughs> making the call? No, home plate umpire. Did he, did he signal he went to his mouth? I don't think so. Oh, it was a balk he called. Bob Davidson calls more balks than the umpire in the league, but I don't think he called them. You know what happens there, Murph? The, the, the pitchers are anticipating maybe a breaking ball sign from the catcher, you know, and all of a sudden it's the fastball sign, and he starts, and now he stops. That happens once in a while. You just have to continue. Once you start, you can't stop. The infield is in, and Jeff Kemp fouls the ball off. The infield playing in. The Mets 
set Viscaino on third and one out. Bottom half of the eighth inning, nine to three New York. Every team in the National League West is behind in tonight's games. And it's hit right back through the middle. Backhand play. The only play is to first base in time for the out. Neat play by Jody Reed. He had no chance to throw the ball home. So it's an RBI for Jeff Kent. Now how about that little play that Jody just made? Only one error I talked about the entire season. He's on the short side, shortstop side. Sliding stuff. Almost looks like a catcher. You know when a catcher has to slide for a pop-up? by the backstop. Look at this play that Jody makes. Slides, comes up, and makes an accurate throw. Look where he threw from. He was over on the shortstop side. That was a neat play by Jody Reed. Rico Bronia's had a beautiful night for the New York Mets. Two singles and a home run. Three hits in four times at bat. Nearing 300, he's now hitting 297. And the breaking ball taken. One ball and one strike. You know, Rico, from what I've seen, doesn't try to overdo anything. He'll take whatever the pitcher gives him. Fastball's away. He'll hit it to left field. You know, a little breaking ball. He'll pull it. You know, I think a hitter like this is very tough to defense because he's going to stay in the middle of the field. And if you, you know, in the outfield, they're playing straight away. Takes his, takes what the pitcher's going to give him. And when he hits the ball, he hits it hard. Taking a breaking ball here. Two balls, two strikes. So many think so many people think you, you hit the baseball with your arms and upper body. I think the legs are so important in hitting. That is foul down the left field line, no play. Game three of this four-game series tomorrow night at Shea Stadium. Bill Pulsiver, the rookie, 21-year-old Southpaw from Fairfax, Virginia, on the mound for New York. And Andy Ashby will be on the mound for the Padres looking for his tenth one of the year. Breaking ball, he got him. Good pitch. So the side retired. One run, one hit, nobody left on. At the end of eight, it is the best. Before the big turn in the battle against the Flames, we have late-breaking developments on the all-out war against Long Island wildfires. Live team coverage is ahead. We'll show you the aerial assault that helped douse the Flames, but why didn't the Feds deliver the heavy artillery? We've got exclusive information on what could be a troubling and dangerous pattern. Plus a first-hand look at what people are going to face when they return home. And how some people are waiting for permission to go back home. Join us on News 4 after the game. Ninth. We're in the ninth now at Shea Stadium. Tonight's Chevrolet player of the game is Carl Everett. In conjunction with this program, Chevrolet will contribute a total of $50,000 to the Boys and Girls Clubs of America in the names of all players of the game for the 1995 Major League Baseball season. And there's Carl Everett. He had quite a night. Big grand slam. Raced the 2-1 deficit. Put on top. Very good night. Bergman for the entire team. They have not been scoring many runs. They broke out tonight, scoring 10 runs on 14 hits. And a breaking ball swung and missed. Now Kelly Sedet will throw to Bronia, one man away. And that's five strikeouts for Blas Miner. Baseball Night in America is brought to you by Sherwin Williams Paint and Decorating Stores. Ask Sherwin Williams. Era Double X, the anti-odor, anti-perspirant that helps keep you extra, extra dry. And by Big Pins, Shavers, and Lighters. Big, worth every penny. Jody Reed is the hitter facing Bloss Miner. Miner has been sensational. That's popped up a foul ball. Bronya hoping for a play. Nope, it's out of his reach. Ross Miner, who came on in relief for New York, backing up Jason Isringhausen, has faced seven batters and struck out five of the seven. So it is a sensational relief outing for Ross Miner. Padres will be able to take solace in the fact that the other contenders of the National League West also 
We're unable to win tonight, at least so far. Dodgers being really hammered by the Phillies. And a ground ball foul down the third baseline past Greg Nettles, the coach. You know, Murph, the toughest thing when you're in the wild card race, let's talk wild card, you have other teams that you have to go over. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's not just one team. So on a night like tonight, this was San Diego's night to win and gain ground both ways. That is in the dirt blocked by Kelly Stadette. One ball and two strikes on Jody Reed. Jody has walked and otherwise gone 0 for 2, grounding out and called out on strikes. Padres have had just three runs and six base hits. And the Mets have a 10-3 lead. We're at the top of the ninth inning. Foul ball back into the ground. No play. Colorado trails St. Louis in the eighth inning by three runs, 6-3. Giants are way behind Montreal. So it looks like every team in the National League West will lose tonight. And the funny thing, when you wake up tomorrow, the Philadelphia Phillies are only going to be a half a game in the wild card. Line drive to right, a base hit. Carl Everett playing it back toward the infield. The executive producers of our game tonight, Tom Roy and Ken Schatzer. Coordinating producer of the Baseball Network is John J. Filippelli. Coordinating producer for NBC Sports, John Gonzalez. The vice president of operations for the Baseball Network, Ed Delaney. Studio producers, Lance Garrett and Bill Greff. Tonight's game produced by George Finkel and directed by Ken Fouts. And a breaking ball just outside, ball one. Our associate director, Jack Beebe. Our technical director, Marty Reyes. Time permitting, we will be joining the Cleveland-Detroit game. Cleveland leading 5-4, to four, knocked down, picked up, thrown by Spires, not in time. We'll let the official score make the call on that. Billy, Billy Spires had just come on to play third base. With Bogar moving over to short, this one is bobbled by Billy Spires, and it will be an error on the third baseman. Just got caught up, took a step back on the ball, and made it into a very difficult hop, that short hop. Now the hitter is Mel Nieves, who was a pinch hitter in the seventh inning and then stayed in the ball game. He was struck out in the seventh. Las Miner has allowed only a single in his third inning of relief down. And a pitch that is low. It is 10-3 New York as we play in the ninth inning. Jody Reed on second, Brian Johnson on first. And the fastball by Bloss Miner. Two balls and no strikes. Murph, I think where the Mets really need to shore up their defense a little bit, right? You know, coming into 96, you're talking about good young pitching. They're next to last in fielding percentage coming into tonight. So with good pitching, you need real good defense. Yeah, you sure do. And Dallas Green is a great believer in that. Dallas constantly will talk about defense and the importance of it. Bruce Bochy, I'm sure, feels the same way as we look at Dallas Green. Melody Aves takes an inside and high ball four. Now the Padres have the bases loaded with one man out in the ninth inning. At the top of the batting order, Steve Finley will be coming up. Greg Pavlik, the pitching coach, will visit the mound and talk to Bloss Miner. Now, Bloss Miner has not pitched in about three weeks. He's been on the DL. And most relief pitchers only work a couple of innings. Anyhow, he might be tired. Yeah, he might be running out of gas right now, and that's why Bird is warning up in the bullpen. Just in case, bases loaded, only one out. Paul Bird had a sensational year out of the bullpen at AAA Norfolk at the International League. So now Finley will bat with the bases loaded and one man down. Finley tonight is 0 for 4. Unusual for him. Best ball for a strike goal. Ross Miner came on in the seventh. Jason Isringhausen pitched six innings, 
Allowed three runs and six hits. Then Miner came on to the seventh. Foul ball and coming back straight to. Well, Miner's going to try to get the little sinker ball down and away, hoping that Finley will turn it over. Pitcher's best friend, the double play. That's what he's going to try to do. Induce the ground ball from Finley. Yeah, he'd love to have it. Finley would be hard to double up. He runs so well, but it's, it can be done. In the dirt, wild pitch, and the runner will score. Coming home is Jody Reed, and it's now a 10 to 4 ball game. So the fourth run scores on a wild pitch. Now that, I, I don't know if I've caught a 55 foot curveball, but that one hit the grass. That was nasty. I don't know. I've never seen one that short. That landed on the grass. Boy, that was nasty. No wonder Kelly Stanett couldn't handle it. So a run is in. Runners move to second and third. Chuck Finley is the batter. And a breaking ball in the dirt. It's two balls and two strikes. And now the fans are getting a little upset. They had the nice cushion. And all of a sudden they see base runners moving around the field. Come on, let's get these last two outs. This guy's been working on his lipstick and cosmetics. <laughs> That's my pass. <laughs> Gosh, I hope not. <laughs> he jammed him in a foul ball back, no play. You sure that's your pass? <laughs> <laughs> ten, to, uh, ten to four, New York leading. We're in the ninth inning. You have to have fun at the ballpark. Oh, right? you should have fun. Darn right. You come to the ballpark dressed like that, and that man. <laughs> You've already had your fun. Smashed the shortstop, fielded by Bogart, thrown to first in time for the out. Coming home is Brian Johnson. So, an RBI for Finley. Now it is 10 to 5. Right Given away in the ninth inning. And Biff Roberts will be the batter. Yeah, yeah. He's, oh, there he is. Yeah, he's a pretty good looking <laughs> guy, isn't he? <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Mets trying to get the final out here in the ninth inning. A game they lead 10 to 5. And a bouncing ball hit toward third foul ball to play. Grabbed by Billy Spires and foul ground. New York 10 runs on 14 hits. The Padres 5 runs on 7 hits. Jason Isringhausen stands to be the winning pitcher. And Willie Blair will take the loss. Bouncing ball foul again down the third baseline. And for Blair, it's probably his first four outing since been moving into the starting rotation. Was three and one with a 1.0 ERA. Give up that grand slam. Those four runs can hurt your ERA in a hurry. Rick Roberts, the batter, that's trying to get the final out. One ball and two strikes. Well, check that Phil Clark is the battle. Phil Clark just came in the game. Ross Rainer has been on since the seventh inning. He will get a save if he closes the game out and pitching three full innings. Are making it very tough for contenders coming into Shea Stadium. Well, Dodgers get swept. San Diego, I mean, last night they lose a heartbreaker. They have their closer, Trevor Hoffman, with 25 saves. Gives up three runs in the bottom of the ninth. Great comeback from the Mets. Today, the bats woke up. They came in tonight, like I said, 168 they were winning as a team on this home stand. Well, this young Mets team, since the All Star break, Will be 23 at 18 and 7 and 3 on this homestand. Swing and a miss, struck him out, and the ball game is over. So Phil Clark has been struck out. In the ninth inning, they scored two runs on one hit, one error, and a man left on. 
So the final score is New York 10 and the San Diego Padres 5. The winning pitcher is Jason Isringhausen, and the loser is Willie Blair. We'll be going to Detroit in Cleveland to join Bob Costas and Bob Ukraine. Welcome to those of you who watched the Mets beat the Padres 10-5. Bob Costas with Bob Euchre at the Jake, Jacobs Field in Cleveland. A runner on base, he is running Herbert Perry of the Indians, and he is thrown out by John Flaherty of the Tigers for the second out here in the last half of the eighth. For the benefit of those of you just joining us, bottom of the eighth, two outs, with Perry being cut down, the bases are now empty. They count one and two to Sandy Alomar. The Indians lead the Tigers five to four. Albert Bell has homered twice on this his 29th birthday his 30th and 31st of the year Travis Fryman has one for the Tigers Jose Mesa is warming in the Indian bullpen and we're going to see him right after this commercial break Alomar fans to end the inning Mesa who is 38 for 38 in save situations is coming in with a one run lead to protect we'll be right back Talk about a guy who came out of nowhere all in one season. You're looking at him, Jose Mesa. One of 15 kids growing up on a farm in the Dominican Republic, knocked around the big leagues. As a starter, he could always throw hard, but hitters would time his fastball slider, which was his entire repertoire. After about five, six innings, he'd start to lose something. They'd begin to time him, and he was just a so-so starter. Last year, they moved into the bullpen when Phil Regan, then a coach with the Indians, now the manager of Mesa's former club, the Orioles, suggested that they try it. He blew four of six save chances last year. This year, he has broken Dennis Eckersley's single-season record for consecutive saves, 38 without a miss. He has been perfect. The record spread over more than one season is 41 by the Giants' Rod Beck. He could move to within two of that if he retires the Tigers here in the ninth. Milt Kyler is the hitter. One for three. Had an RBI triple his first time up. Well, there's nothing to look for against this guy but heat. Fastballs and a very hard slider. And a guy who loves to work every day. As you mentioned earlier, Bob, every time he comes in, he works one inning. That's been it. Fouled off by Kyler. He's got a shot at the Cy Young, although Tim Wakefield leads the league in ERA for a starter and victories might get it for the Red Sox but a reliever is often considered as the MVP something close to an everyday player he's a presence in every game even if he doesn't get into it because you have to manage with that in mind so would you consider him for either of absolutely. those awards oh yeah absolutely I mean look at what this guy has done for this club and and uh, it's it's each and every day I mean when you get to this point in the game and it's a two run one run lead whatever it's a safe situation he's going to be in there I don't care who the starter is and what he's done he's going to be in there the 2 2 pitch to Kyler hit into right field and backing up to make the catch in shallow right is the second baseman by got in on his fist and by squeezes the little flare for the first out hey, you got to be ready for nothing but heat against this guy you got to get out in front of him here's that last fastball and Easy play for Bayerga. This guy's a little bit intimidating, too. He comes inside on you and got that nasty slider down low and away. For his first at bat now, the catcher John Flaherty, Chad Curtis, the center fielder, next. Sparky Anderson has only the veteran Scott Fletcher left on his bench. 5 4 Indians, top of the ninth, one out, nobody on. The 1 0 pitch from Mason. A ball and a strike. Listen to him roar here. I love this guy here, Bob. They really do. His best fastball is in the mid-90s. But he's added that two-seam fastball for sinking action. And that has really been what has made the difference. He had the four-seamer, but he couldn't consistently throw that, even at top speed, inning after inning, past big league hitters. Adding the two-seamer changed everything. Well, it gives you, as a pitcher, the ability to work inside him. And you can throw a fastball down the middle. And if you got that sinking action out of you're on somebody's fist. There's that slider right there. That's the breaking ball from Mesa. A bargain in the modern world of baseball, making only eight hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. John Hart, the GM, threw in a ten grand bonus when he made the All-Star team. He didn't have a clause to that effect in his contract. 
And this ball is hit in the air to left center field. Bell and Lofton. And Lofton calls Bell off. And Mesa is an out away from finishing this and recording his 39th consecutive save. Okay, I wish the fans, uh, everybody, could have been able to see the scene when Mesa comes out of the bullpen. When that gate flies open out there, I mean, this whole place. And there's an excess of 40,000 here tonight, 41,000 plus. When that gate flies open in right center field and he comes out, this place erupts. Mesa's ERA is 1.09. He hasn't allowed an earned run in 29 straight innings. Going for 30 here. Drive to right. Ramirez going back. This is well hit. And it's gone. Do you believe that? He has blown his first save of the year with two out in the top of the ninth. An opposite field home run by Chad Curtis. His 17th homer of the year has tied this one at five. A lot of people have turned around and heading back into the stadium. I figure when this guy comes in, it's over. Those that had left and are leaving now, walking out the gates in left field, have turned around and come back in. They can't believe it. This crowd is stunned. Now Higginson. Fastball is high. Hmm. And here at Shea Stadium on Baseball Night in America, I'm Bob Murphy with Rick Sarone. And Rick, the New York Mets defeat the San Diego Padres 10 to 5. They belted three home runs in the game tonight. They were impressive. Yeah, I liked it. I mean, they struggled offensively coming into tonight and then exploded. Carl Everett with the big grand slam home run. But the one that impressed me was Butch Husky. That ball was in, in different st stages and it just kept carrying. The other home run was hit by Rico Bronia, who also delivered a couple of hits. What did you think of the rookie pitcher, Jason Isringhausen? After the first inning, he was a little rocky, but uh, settled down and started getting his curveball over. But what impressed me was his fastball. Good life on his fastball, and I think they have a good future here with the Mets. Well, the best pennant race in baseball is the National League West. But tonight, every team in the National League West appeared headed toward a loss. Our final score, the Mets defeat the Padres by a score of 10 to 5. Now stay tuned for your local news, followed by The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. And remember, next week, the A's come into Yankee Stadium, Saturday at 8, on Baseball Night in America. telecast has been produced by the Baseball Network in association with NBC Sports.